Let me just check the sound. Great, loud and clear, beautiful. I hope you're doing well. <clears throat> While I'm waiting for Brother Ned and Neb to join us, I can see there's already one comment in the chat which says, Bati Crew gonna be upset. That's, that message was left by the messenger Jafar Blackman. Now, let me just share a screen briefly. I hope you all doing well. And oh, actually, um, what was the name of the username? It's Mr. Grandmaster Imhotep. When people come on my platform, you know, I give them the respect, no matter their title, because I've seen on um, on uh, on Garfield's platform, and they're used to doing that they wouldn't really get they wouldn't really let uh, the brother speak i mean sometimes you can interject it's fine you know sometimes you are, you might cut someone off you might cut you off but at one point you know you have two other people talking at the same time as you and uh they did some fast stuff to me as well i mean you know they kept me on hold for 50 minutes trying to refute something that i presented and then, uh, you know, Garfield put me out of the stream three times. And then he was trying to sun me, lecturing me. Um, so then I left because I had Garfield on my platform, you know, and I, and I gave him the respect that I give to all guests that are calling in my platform, you know. So I know how to, to listen to people, you know, and even if I don't agree, you know, I let them state their peace. So, and the proof is in, all the videos that have been uploaded now there's one video is seven hours long when i addressed uh, the Bati crew i'm not ashamed of that video but i'm not proud of it either it was in response to what was going on because you have a team effort from people who bend over and get spanked in the bottom and apparently they might be trying to spread that you know in africa and who knows where else so we are living in a world that is more or less free, particularly in the West. And if people want to bend over and get spanked in the bottom, it's on them. But if for whatever reason, some people don't think that it is fly. And if it was only that, that would be one thing. But there's a part two coming up regarding those uh, secret societies. And, you know, I've shown that the paddling appears to derive from slavery time. So it's a strange thing to perpetuate some physical punishment, some corporal punishment that they used to inflict 
upon the enslaved Africans. And I haven't even touched the sexual assault, sexual abuse yet. So I have a part two coming regarding this. They have uh, some sort of oath of secrecy. So who knows what other kind of activities they might engage in. So many people went to those universities and joined some fraternities. So probably many people went through this hazing slash pledging pro process, but probably the average Joe who went through this paddling got smacked, fully dressed, and then kept it pushing because there was a requirement and they really wanted to join the fraternity or they were put on the spot and they thought, okay, well, but some others, you know, and we'll go through that, you know, we'll have some demonstrations, some others, you know, didn't really necessarily have pants on when it was happening. And we'll go through some testimonials anyway, of course, from unidentified individual, because like I've said, it's not really fly for people to come up and being identified and say, well, yeah, you know, <laughs> they did this to me, they did that to me. It's not really fly, and I, and I can understand. Because if it was fly, we'd have mad people by now would have said, yeah, remember, brother, back in the days when we used to bend over, you know what I'm saying? We used to put our pants down, we put, and, you know, all these other things, you know, it's not really fly, you know. We have people, you know, who do like this crew, this crew, this guy was disrespectful. Those guys have the nerve to say that Dr. Shekhan Tadio was wrong and that he guessed they, they're throwing salt on Dr. Shekhan Tadio's name. They are disrespecting him. And they're also saying that other PhDs are wrong when those guys are not PhDs, you know. Now, it doesn't mean that if you are not a PhD, you cannot criticize some PhD's work, but to say that he guessed allegedly because he met someone who told you that there's doubt about some vocabulary use is greatly irresponsible. Greatly irresponsible. So we have some people who are used to doing linguistic acrobatics and linguistic gymnastics. And um, they want things to, they want to normalize being pseudos. And if we let that happen, then that's it, it's a wrap. Because they come up with things like, you know, appealing to authority, referring to authority. They have those slick talking points to look good and brush off other people's academ academics achievement. The funny thing is that when it comes to medicine, nobody's talking about appealing to authority or referring to authority. When we are sick and we go to our doctor, we don't tell him, well, are you sure, doctor? You know, because I read this online or I read this book about medicine. Because doctor, right now, you're appealing to authority when you say that. Now, going to the doctor, to the GP, general practitioner, it's one thing, but going to the hospital. And those guys, if they ever have any accident that requires them being taken care of at the hospital, they will not say, oh, you know, you, you want to administrate this uh, medicine to me, this drug to me? You want to operate? You want to perform surgery? Are you sure that's the right surgery? Because I read a book and, you know, it sounds to me like you're appealing to authority just because that's a consensus in medicine. It doesn't make it true just because a bunch of people in a med in a medical field say something that would be ridiculous but they're trying to do that with black history and with linguistics it's like the wild wild west anything goes and what are the results of this uh, mentality well we have people who claim that ra is a volcano that allah is an egyptian text and back in 2008 slash 2009, somebody came up with a video where someone claimed that a hieroglyphic symbol means Allah, which is one of the most ridiculous claims 
ever made. And some people believed it. Some people shared it. And recently, somebody else went on Sanetta's platform. Out of curiosity, I was like, okay, let me look up the brown brother has to say. We were not perfect, so we will make mistakes. But I want to see, you know, if, you know, more or less, there will be some interesting statements. And that young brother pulled up. It's a Moorish kind of brother. I think he wears fez sometimes, you know. They don't all wear, all, they don't, not all the Moors wear fez, but um, many do. And he pulled up that same glyph of the arm, Cardinal reference, D, D36, and he said that it means Allah. He repeated that same stuff that is over a decade old. Over a decade old. So then that's when I stopped the video. I was like, okay. You know, uh, I can have tolerance for um, weird claims, but right now it's like extra pseudo. It's like, you know, and speaking of pseudo, uh, we have some people, you know, some crew, some team, and they have the nerve to label Dr. Shekhan Tadiyab as pseudo. And I've heard when Mr. Vega spoke and he literally begged Kafir not to go and get destroyed because this is what's going to happen. The question is, how bad will he get destroyed? At one point, he was talking and he said, yeah, you guys said Dr. Ben is pseudo. And they were trying to say no, but then he said, well, first of all, you are not there. And when I said his name, when I said Dr. Ben's name, some people went pseudo, pseudo, pseudo. And then it was kind of quiet, which is an indication that most likely it is true. And that doesn't surprise me because I've been hearing those guys. Now, I'm not really listening to their live stream in, in full, but I, I've been hearing them, you know, basically making fun of our elder scholars. And we have the right to disagree once again, but... <laughs> Those are the scholars did some research, went on the field. They were familiar with several languages. They've been teaching. And those guys who criticized them, I have never seen them doing any, um, well, I've never seen them presenting any, uh, any work by themselves. It's always a group effort. And they mainly go online particularly on Google, the source that they quote the most is Wikipedia. I have never seen them doing any field research. Some of them, I don't even know if they ever traveled outside of their home country. And there might be one or two who know some foreign language or one foreign language, but the majority speak only English. So on one hand, we have some good, some people who speak several languages who have been teaching and who have been traveling on the field doing research and writing books. So they've presented some information. And the other, on the other hand, we have some new age people who just get together and it looks like it's because of an agenda that they are in here trying to uh tarnish the legacy of those people that we appreciate and i heard one say well you know everybody on this panel is um atheist people have the right to be atheist but why would they focus so much on chimetic people surely out of weakness because it's easier to try to bully the people who are who have less strength in terms of number because there's strength in number and of course the comedic people when we look at black people worldwide the comedic people are a minority so i'm still waiting for our brother i'm gonna read A quote unquote short bio. I 
we'll make it larger. And if it doesn't come, then I guess I'll change the title and the thumbnail. And then we're going to do some question and answer session. I've sent in an email to let him know that the live stream has started. I haven't had any response yet, so something probably came up and it's not available. We'll see how, you know, it might just be a few minutes late. So Nejaneb is a student of Dr. Rikeri Amen, Egyptologist and linguist in ancient Egyptian transliterations, translations, grammar, and Coptic on the third level private courses. Ordul Necher Neb also works directly with assistant linguistic professor Dr. Nasi Sati, PhD, of the University of Khartoum, in which they have submitted a new scientific linguistic thesis advancing Dr. Obenga's Negro Egyptian idea, Obenga 1993. Ordul Necher Neb also was granted permission to start the Negro Egyptian Linguistics Group on the African Linguistic Abibitumi platform created by award-winning linguist professor Dr. Obadele Kambo of Ghana University. Let's patriot on the movement and fund our undying efforts to innovate African scientific research. Nedneb's linguistic research was also accepted by CECCTRA, University of Benin, Department of History and Anthropology, for the second annual Outstanding African Thinkers Conference in which you can watch the recording of present the presentation and then our presentation and then you do have the YouTube link. So I suggest that we wait a little bit to see if our brother will come or send me an email to update me. But feel free if you have any questions or statements and I wasn't going to share the link to get on the panel, but I will do so now. Okay, I'm going to wait. Just, just feel free to participate in the chat for now. So to those who are interested, I've shared the link to get on the panel. However, the requirement, the only requirement to get on the panel is to show your face. Otherwise, you can just use the chat. And we'll see, we'll wait a little bit and we'll see if I will ultimately change the title. But we can continue regardless. But if you continue and our brother cannot make it, then I will change the title. So let me know what's good. Let me know what's popping. Now, there's a brother who started taking the Meadow Nature class, and he told me about uh, the discussion between uh, Sister Napa and some other guys, some other dudes, some uh, people who like to do Google Scholarship. And it's very funny because right when they started the discussion and the sister said, well, you know, the live stream lasted for seven hours and now you don't really have time or something like that. And the same dude who was trying to send me and lecture me 
who made me wait for 40 to 50 minutes and let other people criticize what I've presented without even addressing my source and who kicked me out of the panel three times and who had the nerve to tell me that I don't have any discipline and that I was crying like a girl just because I've put in a chat that he kicked me out. So you cannot even le leave a message in the chat. Now that same guy, he was just more than on his feelings. Rumbling, rumbling, rumbling. So where was the discipline then? See, some people are just very comfortable. Hey, Grandmaster Im Hotel 360. Feel free with your questions. Feel free. If your brothers and sisters have questions about the med nature, feel free. Anything that I've said now, two years ago, anything on video, anything in a live stream on my platform or on some other platform, we can address it all. We have Nesu West who wrote Ankh and Ma'at. But I will go ahead and change the title because our brother is not there. Something must have came up. It's not available. And let's continue the discussion. And we also have I am that I am. Hotel to you as well. So... Uh, which thumbnail should I use? Hey, our brother Osar MK is here. So tap send E. Hope you're doing well. Which thumbnail should I use? Okay, I have one on my phone. I'm going to send it to myself. Oh, damn. Oh, never mind. Okay, let me do this. Okay, that's it. So I've changed the title of this video. And if I refresh now, yes, it does say questions and answers, free discussion, don't hate and participate. The I've changed also the thumbnail of the video, but it usually takes a, a few minutes for the thumbnail to change to be updated. So those who just arrived, I was waiting for our brother. And uh, I've sent him an email to tell him that the live has started and ask him if he is still available, but there's no response. So obviously something happened and he cannot make it. So Simon Kai is asking me to give a breakdown of the Israel Stella. And he also wrote, M. Hetep Seba Ankh was dead. And um, now that you mentioned Seba, I was telling that new that that new Medunacha learner of uh, of mine who had his first Medunacha class that, and I've said that um, once or maybe twice during live streams. Well, I'm not sure if I said it once or twice 
maybe just once. But anyway, I went through many dictionaries and I haven't, I haven't yet found Seba translated as teacher. I've seen student, uh, I've seen teaching, the verb. Of course, we have Sebait, which has the same root. And Sebait is usually translated as teaching or instruction. But I have yet to see Seba translated as teacher from a dictionary. So if anybody can direct me to that, uh, please do so. Now, as for the Israel Stella, the so-called Israel Stella, well, I can share my main video. And if people don't know what my main video is, I'm going to show you. Hold on, I'm going to do that. But feel free if you have questions, brothers and sisters, really, you know, you can just use the chat and ask your questions. As you see, I'm going through the chat and then I answer to the best of my abilities. So this is my channel, and if you scroll, um, well, that's because I'm live streaming that this live stream appears here. Otherwise, normally you have that video here, Kemet Emad before Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And you also have the link of today's video on every, uh, uh, on every video in the description section, you see? Uh, first, you have the email address for people who want to contact me, if they are interested in taking Middle Nature classes, then you have the Cash App link, then you have the PayPal link, and then you have the link to this video, which is once again entitled, as you can see, Kemet and Ma'at, Before Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And you can see that it has, uh, well, some people will dispute it. Um, <laughs> there's no such thing as uh, 392.48 views. It is uh, 392,000 views. I don't know why it shows like that here, but if I go back and here, you can see that it says 32, I'm sorry, uh, 392K, you know, so that's 392,000 views. So really the original title was, um, uh, or is, it shows in the beginning, it's an um, introduction to Kemet. But just a little backstory, very briefly, uh, some people, you know, they did some team effort like we see nowadays again, and they proceeded to flag my previous account, which was called Egypt Decoded. And I had many other accounts before as well. I lost basically thousands of subscribers. You can see that there's um, 1,641 comments in this video. So, when it was uploaded under the original title, Introduction to Kemet, uh, I think it had 300,000 views, didn't I? I think it had 300,000 views. But anyway, I had 9,000 subscribers, and in 2016, I lost my account. So I had to start from uh, scratch. And then I decided to come up with this different title here, Kemet Ahmad before Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Now, as you can see, that video lasts 47 minutes and 35 seconds. It's less than an hour. So really, I urge you, brothers and sisters, if you have not seen this video, you know, I think it's, it's worthwhile. I think you will appreciate it. That's the video I'm the most proud of. There are some mistakes in this uh, presentation, you know. Nobody's perfect, you know. So, um, but I don't think there's too many mistakes, you know. I think for the most part, it's very informative, you know. Now, I will scroll to the part regarding the Israel Stella. Oh, you know what? Since, since we are talking about, you know, <laughs> similarities or plagiarism, because it's available, but... this was found Plagiarism in Armana, of the um, original name was Medic text or text from ancient Egypt. And the Bible. Well, let's have a look at the great hymn to Aten, and after that, I will move to the um, so-called Israel Stella or Stele. 
So let's listen up. Akhenaten lived around 1300 BCE. David, if he existed, lived around 1000 BCE. That's 300 years apart. Akhenaten was there three centuries before David, if he existed. I'm going to show you a case of plagiarism. Some might say it's just a coincidence. What you are looking at is the hymn to Aten, otherwise called the great hymn to Aten. Now, Aten is the god that Akhenaten was worshipping. Uh, don't want to go through the whole story because it's available, but this was found in Armana. The original name was Aket Aten, which means the horizon of Aten. That sounds similar to Akhenaten's name. Now, what I'm about to do is compare the hymn to Aten with Psalm 104. And I will only say the verses because it's all in the same chapter, which is, once again, Psalm 104. Hymn to Aten. When you set in the western horizon of the sky, the earth is in darkness. Verse 20. You bring on darkness and night falls. Hymn to Aten. Every lion comes forth from his den. Verse 21. The young lion roar after their prey. Him to Aten. At daybreak, when thou arisest on the horizon. Verse 22. The sun ariseth. Him to Aten. All the world, they do their work. Verse 23. And man goes out to work. Him to Aten. Trees and plants are flourishing. Verse 16. The trees of the Lord are full of sap. Him to Aten. The birds which fly from their nests. Verse 12. Beside them the birds of the heaven dwell. Him to Aten. The ships are sailing north and south as well. Verse 26. There go the ships. Him to Aten. Who givest breath to sustain all that he has made? Verse 29. When you take away their breath, they die. Him to Aten. You supply his necessities. Verse 28. That thou givest them, they gather. Him to Aten. How manifold it is what thou hast made. Verse 24. O Lord, how manifold are thy works. Him to Aten. For thou hast set a Nile in heaven, that it may descend for them and make waves upon the mountains. Verse 13. He waters the hills from his upper chambers. Him to Aten. Thou makest the seasons in order to rear all that thou hast made, the winter to cool them, and the heat that they may taste thee. Verse 19. He appointed the moon for seasons. The sun knows it's going down. Now, what is the most... That being done, now we're going to move to the so-called Israel Stella. better representations is the oldest zodiac known the oldest circular zodiac known some of you might have heard about a mention of israel in an ancient egyptian document they are talking about the merneptah stel erroneously called the israel stel it's in uh, egypt in, in the cairo museum now i'm going to show you the, the, the line, the part that they claim means Israel. Okay, on the actual stair, you read it from right to left. But for clarity's sake, you're going to see it underneath um, from left to right. So what I've done, right, because it's a bit technical there, is for those who want to take it further and maybe learn the hieroglyphs, the meduneta, I have put the meaning of each symbol. And underneath, I have put their number according to the cardinal list, okay? So then you can, you basically you have a breakdown of the, the meaning of that, that actual part. It's not the whole sentence, but that's the part that uh, we are interested in.
some of those symbols you probably notice that there is no description like no translations because it doesn't actually mean the letter it's, it's just to give a a better definition you know it's an ideogram that's what it is okay but basically what it spells is isri r or isrir okay and that's how it's spelled most of the time okay and another thing that's important uh, the last symbols is um, a man and a woman, and underneath you have the three strokes for the plural. So that tells you that it, it's talking about people, not an actual place. So it's talking about people. So saying that it, it means Israel is wrong, definitely. Okay. So if anybody try, is trying to throw that at you, then you know how to get back at them. All right. That's very important because there's so many misconceptions. And the funny thing as well is that they are always trying to use, I mean, when it comes to archaeology, you know, and they try to have some legitimacy, they always have to go to the Egyptian documents. You understand? Anyway. So that's it. Our brother Osa MK asked and I delivered. <laughs> oh, and guess who's calling? <laughs> it's your brother Asar M. Khan. Use <laughs> with any other individuals. <laughs> I'm over here moving uh, my stuff into the storage. Some of my my goodies, my real goodies. Um, you know, Ankh was looking at uh, a particular scholar the other night. Right before I get started, cut that off. Make sure y'all go get this. Uh, is that a DVD? This is an old VHS. Oh, okay. This is uh, Africa. David Basil Davidson. It's just some profound things on this. You're not gonna see probably anymore. This is the old DVD from the Brit. He got busy on there. Um, Ankh found something from a scholar the other day. I think his name is David Ortiz. And I was just thinking about it driving in the car. <clears throat> when you hold up that Israel Stella like that, which doesn't say Israel, as you pointed out, as we pointed out earlier today, it says Yisri Ari. But when you look at the hawk vulture, it's actually an owl. Somebody did some. Uh, they they uh they they, they said they're saying mm -hmm. that it was went over. If we say the name and it's an owl, it almost looks like. It could almost be Ishmael. You see that part with the hawk vulture. Mm -hmm. Now uh, this is the one our brother is talking about. For those, well, basically, there's only one uh, glyph that looks like a bird, and that's the one that you know. Um, it's, it's reference G1. I think Garden reference G1, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so if if it is the the virtue reference, I'm gonna double check. It's definitely G1. Uh, that's what yes. they have here. But the, mm -hmm. the new scholar went to the to the site. And got mm -hmm. close up on it. He said, this is the owl. He said, somebody did some extracurricular stuff to the mm -hmm. top to try to make it a hawk vulture. Mm -hmm. If that's an owl, I'm proposing now before any of the scholars run up and say, oh, see, what? look what I've discovered. You're hearing it right here on my brother's channel. I'm mm -hmm. saying this is probably the name Yishmel. And Yishmel is getting the business. From Marin Pitah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So and, if and, we mm -hmm, say it, well, that would be ahead, and his people and his seed is over with. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. I'm proposing if it's an M and if it's actually connected, which we haven't connected anything, nor would I try to, but that would be Yishmael getting the business from Marin Pitah. Mm -hmm. Now, ju just so that, you know, the, the, the layman can can understand what what we're talking about. Uh, but first, I, I'm going to share uh, a link to Gardner's sign list. 
um, I'm going to show you the unity rules. So you will find that at the bottom of the link that I have shared in the chat. Okay. You also have that link at the uh, in the description of all my videos. So this is a so-called, or oh, so-called, this is a quote-unquote meta nature alphabet. Those glyphs represent one phonetic value or one sound. So the first one here is the vulture, and the vulture's phonetic value is the sound A, ah, and this is the digit three, but really is what is called the Aleph, because we don't have the Aleph on our keyboard. Many people use the digit three, but that's the sound, the sound A. Ah, okay. Now the owl is in the second row and is here. And the phonetic value of the owl is the sound M and the reference, the gardener reference or classification is G17. Okay. So now if I return to the Meron Petar Stella, also known as the Israel Stella, that's why I like to say so-called Israel Stella, because people simply claim that this is the oldest mention of Israel in history, you know, so it will give some uh, legitimacy to their tale. <laughs> the read leaf here, now I've made, by the way, by the way I've made this video um, in 2008 slash 2009. So you have the double read leaf, which really could be considered as one single glyph. The phonetic value is the sound E and it's transliterated with a Y. But you see here, with my limited knowledge at the time, I've put one relief and another relief. And uh, and twice I've put equals I. Now it's the letter I indeed, but it's pronounced E, just like in French. The what 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 you pronounce I we pronounce it E. You see? Uh, for example, Paris, you see, we have the I and we pronounce it E. Now, really in French we don't pronounce the S. We say Paris, but it's fine. So the red leaf is a sound E. This is the bolt or the lock. It's also a unilateral, and it stands for the sound S. Many Egyptologists will say that in the Old Kingdom, it was the sound Z, as you say in America, and Z, as they say in England. Later on, it kind of evolved into the sound S. Then we have two oblique or diagonal um, strokes, and the phonetic value of this is the, the sound E as well, transliterated with a Y. Um, um, I've put them here, <laughs> but I didn't ascribe any phonetic value for it. Um, then we have the mouth, which is the sound R. Then we have the reed leaf again, which is the sound E, transliterated with the I once again. And really, the transliteration is usually lowercase and in italic as well. So, so far we have E, C, R, and then if this is the uh, vulture, then that will be E, C, R, R, because we have the mouth once again, once again, which has a phonetic value um, R. Um, this is just a single stroke, so there's no phonetic value for it. This is a determinative, really, that would denote like a foreign people or foreign place. Some, come again, brother? Barbarians. <laughs> well, and uh, oh, we have uh, Kevin. I hope you're doing well. We had a, such a nice discussion and uh, sensitive yeah. discussion, you know, uh, about 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 slavery. And I guess sometimes we 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 it's, it's helpful to have this kind of discussion. Usually, we don't have this kind of discussion on 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 um, conscious community platforms, you know. But um, uh, everybody had a chance to get their point across, and you know, and we need healing. We need healing, you know. Uh, and once again, my brothers, at the end of the day, most of the people who listen to me are from America. And um, I can assure you, brothers and sisters, that African people have love for you, brothers and sisters in America. You might come across a few people who use term like Akata, and maybe they don't even know what Akata means. But you have some people who have more of a European mindset than anything else. They're like, you know, very upper class and they, 
just want to associate with a certain type of people, but we should not make a rule out of an exception. Because on the other hand, you know, in America, sometimes some people make some statements towards Africans. I mean, you know, we have some Hebrews who are liked, you know, from, I don't even want to say the name of the organization, but we heard Saneta talking to Baba Heru and asking him about those people and he named the organization and they celebrate the death of Africans. Can you imagine if we have some Africans who celebrate the death of African-Americans? You see, but of course, we and Africans, continental Africans, Africans of the diaspora, we don't make a rule out of an exception. We know it's an exception, you know. So sometimes we have some talks, cliche talk, like, oh, Africans look down on us. They think they're better. No, no, it's, it's, it's not like that. But anyway, that was just in passing. Very nice uh, discussion we had with our brother, uh, Kefren who apparently might have been a more at some point <laughs> because of the suffix that we have here. So uh, James Power as well, you know, is a place to be. So anyway, um, so far we have ECR. Uh, yeah, I was saying, yeah, this 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 leaf here is a determinative, no phonetic word. Just like we have the city man and the city woman, those are determinative. It doesn't, doesn't have any sound here. And we have the mark of the plural. So it's talking about people, not a place. And um, if it is the 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 the, the vulture reference G one, indeed it was spelled E C D R. But if it is the owl, and this is the original, mind you, you know the original part from the Merim Petastella. This is the hieroglyphic transcript here, you know. So if it is the owl, then it's the sound M. So that would be E C R M E R. You know. Now some people like to argue that the R stands for the sound L. Um, in the middle exactly. Egyptian and before there's no such thing as the L it's the sound R and because it's an African language it's a roll the R which means that if I was to say read this book the rolled R the African R would be <coughs> read this book just like in a Arabic or Arabic you know it's a rolled R so um, some people like to argue that you know the R stood for the L but during that time there's no such thing as an L and I'm talking about the L sound. Later on, during the Greek or Roman time, they would have the L sound and possibly they might have used the mouth for the sound L. And it is known that they've used the lion, which initially stood for Ru, or the R sound, some people argue. And ultimately they used that for the L. And I've shown you that for uh, Ptolemy's, <coughs> that we call Ptolemy, you know, so that was just in passing. But feel free, brother Osamka. Absolutely. And if they're if they're proposing that, uh, shout out to Shaka, shout out to Kevin, of course. Um, I would say the next thing that they're going to do is go Yisri Mel, and they're gonna call it Ishmael. Because you did. <laughs> I can almost see this happening as we speak. No, it's not Israel. It's really Ishmael. And see, this is what happened to Ishmael. And <clears throat> the reason being, when you speak in Hebrew, everything is yuh, 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 yuh. Everything is Y sounding. So the two reed leaves make our Y. Then you have the Z, Yiz, Rr, with the R, the mouth at the bottom of that door bolt lock, as we broke down earlier. Uh, the reed leaf is next. Yizri, ih. And then if this is an M instead of the A, the hawk vulture, as you see, and propose that it's gone over and somebody did some graffiti to it to make it a long A, which really, if it's an owl, as the brother David Ortiz, I believe, Kefran and Ankh were showing, that would make it Yizri Mel if the R acts like an L, which means it would be Yishmel or Ishmel. So you're hearing it on this channel first, because I think this is probably where they're going to go if they find out that that is graffiti. It is talking about a person. So this could be Yishmael here, uh, laced as a barbarian to us um, and his people. His seed member, it says, uh, Fiket, et cetera, et cetera. Fiket ben Peret, his season is over. His birch is over Peret, basically what it says. And... um. This would be the end of Ishmael if it's not Israel. 
and it's never been confirmed to be Israel. They tried to say they were the Habiru later. You can't have it both ways because Habiru and Yisriar, the people on this stella are from Libya and Nubia, the Meripata stella that we're showing now. The people that come up in the Habiru text are not from either one of those locations, and it's different. <clears throat> so the next step, because you can see there's people at the end of this, is probably going to be talking about Ishmael and his people. And I bet you that's where this goes. And you heard it here before any scholar tries to throw it out there. And oh, see, it's, it's not Israel. It's, it's Ishmael that they're talking about. But he must have escaped. And that's what they're going to go with. I bet you money. I bet you money. <laughs> and, and, you know, there's one thing that, you know, most of our people don't necessarily realize. Uh, don't have the citations handy right now. But many times different people have quoted scholars, Israeli scholars who stated that there's no evidence of the exodus ever happening. But our people, you know, really think that we have evidence for that. And when it comes to what we call the Hebrews in history, I would like someone to point me the ancient mentioned, I'm sorry, the ancient mentions of the Hebrews, you know, because mm. sometimes there's some people who's very good with linguistic acrobatics and linguistic gymnastics who said, you know, there were Hebrews in Kemet. Matter of fact, he said that the Hebrews were Egyptians. So, I mean, it's like, you know, mental health issues. But <laughs> if anybody believes that we had Hebrews in Kemet, please <laughs> show me. Please show me. Now, if you want to say Canaanites, that's something else. Yeah. Because Hebrews are from Shem and Canaanites are from Ham. So you can't have it both ways. Pick one. <laughs> and no, we don't subscribe to the Hamite theory. But that's just to throw that out there. You got it on my brother, Shaka and Dugu Chemist channel first. I'm going to probably do a video later tonight and, and connect it in that fashion. I'm going to connect it for him. But we got it on this channel first. I was telling Smash, I said, me, you, and me, you, him, and probably Sable Reggie, we should do a new channel. We should do a new channel. But why, why would Smash want to do a new channel? He already has a channel that's doing well. Yeah, all our channels could do well. But, hmm. you know, it's like, why would I come on YouTube, right? When I've got fighters who make millions of dollars and I, you know, I make a certain salary. Because mm -hmm. if we do a new channel and it's the four of us together, <clears throat> it's going to be very powerful information. It's uh, exciting for the people. We can really do some stuff over there. We can really make it happen. He was all in for it. Yeah. Now, now uh, okay. So, so um, Smash, yourself, myself, who's the fourth one? Saber Reggie. Uh, uh, with, that, with me, you know, uh, I respectfully decline. I, I cannot associate myself with. You can do it. You can do it. just because you argue with somebody. That don't mean that that's the end of the world. Well, yeah, you know, it's more than argument. I, I don't know if you had a chance to see what he did for 50 minutes. He was trying to refute my information without even going at the source, saying that I'm, you know, uh, quoting white scholars. You're doing the race car, the race card, and then. Um, saying that I'm not doing the, the, the right methodology, that I'm not doing the proper methodology. And, and after 50 minutes of doing Google scholarship, looking for any link, any blog, any website to use to go against my information, once again, without even going at the source that I've presented. As a matter of fact, he even said he did not watch the video. <laughs> and then after that, he said, I, I need to do more research. So he just humiliated himself. That's just, really, that's, he talks about methodology. He's been talking about methodology and scholarship for the longest, but yet live on the air on the Bati Crew leader, Garfield's channel, he, he basically did the worst ever. He, for 50 minutes or 40 to 50 minutes, he's been looking for stuff online on, using Google to refute some information that he has not even um, seen. Like I have a 20, my video is longer than 20 minutes, but 
it's over 20 minutes that I make the demonstration to show Virgin described, well, or actually describing herself as a, as a, as a virgin. Now people might dispute the meaning of the word hunet or hunut, I forgot actually. Uh, but um, to just not look at the source, to not just even dispute the source that I've given, and then after 50 minutes say, I need to do more research, but all the while criticizing me as if I'm pseudo, when he's part of a team of people who not only bend over against Pank and the butt, but who teach that rise of volcano and allies in the Egyptian text. I mean, that's too much. And and besides that, I mean, he's been dissing Kemeti people for the longest. Like I told our dear brother Netanyahu, he said that the pharaohs were crazy. The pharaohs who built the pyramids, he said they were crazy. I don't know if you've ever seen that, you know, but he said it on my platform, so I can put it up if people think that I, I'm, I'm lying on this one, you know. We'll sit, we'll sit down, we'll chop up, we'll chop it up about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but you know, I mean, you know, the, um, uh, you know, he, he, he can do his thing. And, um, but this is, uh, I've said it for, for a long time. He's, he's inconsistent. He's on the fence. He's a great fence rider. And uh, previously he gave ammunitions to the Hebrew when they were about to go against Seti. I don't even think he, he, I don't even know if Reggie will label himself Kemetic now, you know. Uh, so uh, it's, it's just so many things. There's just so many things. And, you know, I have a level of tolerance, but, you know, and, and the reason he did all this was because I wouldn't, um, I, I, I stated that he was on the website of this University of Amen, you know, so he's part of a team. And I just suggested that he might ask them to remove him from the website. But I asked him when it, when it was time to talk about similarities, you know, and he will, uh, will talk about, you know, Isis transforming herself into a bird so she could be impregnated by Osa. I asked him, you know, did a, did a bird have sex with a man, you know, because sometimes <laughs> I don't know where people are going, you know, and he was very upset at that, you know. But anyway, you know. Right, right. Well, it, you know, it, it it'll be a channel where we can, you know, we we can. Uh, it'll be a platform where, you know, not all the time you guys will be on together, but it will be moments where mm. we'll be able to come together and do some stuff, such as translations, breaking stuff down, and addressing certain issues concerning. Because you know, you know, um, I, I um, I'm trying to be selective because. Uh, like I said earlier, I've, I've lost an account in 2016 with 9,000 subscribers. Before that, I've lost uh, two accounts. One had 3,000 subscribers. The other one had 4,000 subscribers. And that was within like two weeks. And that was because of some people that I will not name, but many people know them. Some yeah. people that I was once close to, and they went on a flagging campaign just because I pulled, I made a video called White Semites Black Awakening. And I did not even address them. I was just showing the the, the phenotype of uh, the uh, people of the Levant. So uh, on the French continent, you know, you have some, you know, rapists and pedophiles who are mainly Pan-Africans, you know, um, and who also teach, you know, anti-Black and anti-African stuff, just such as Africans are living a jungle life and uh, Africans are not civilized. You know, the Nation of Islam teaching, and many people don't know that they teach that. They, this is supreme wisdom. So um they gave me a great deal of uh, hardship as well because i did not agree with anti-black and anti-african teaching so uh they actually literally try to send me to jail you know what i'm saying on the false accusation of assault uh on my baby mother you know when oh. she's the one who assaulted me you know and oh. uh they filmed my house my parents house actually they filmed my phone number my letterbox so people could see you know my government name you know they were wishing that some people would try to you know pull up on me and they slandered me all kinds of way and it's a known fact that they are actually defending and supported rapists and pedo pedophiles there's more than one case it's just like in america we have several cases garfield stated that you know about two hebrews were lights and um now one brother left a comment saying that one of those two brothers was innocent uh but you know that's something that we usually hear, but um, some people have secrecy code, so we will know the full thing for sure. But there's not many people who come out and say, well, actually, I was guilty. I did that. You know, it's not a good look, you know. So that's why I'm really trying to be selective because uh, we need to, <laughs> Grandma Saim Hotel wrote, Reggie is a sellout. 
um, we need people to be solid. If you're comedic, you, you, you're not going to discommodate people. I've never seen a Muslim dissing other, other Muslims unless those other Muslims are not following uh, Islam as they should, you know? And it's the same for Christianity. I, I don't see Christians dissing Christians uh, unless those Christians, you know, are not following the, the, the corpus of Christianity. And it's the same for the Hebrews or lights or the Jews. They don't diss other Hebrews or lights or Jews unless they don't follow the, the, the teachings, you know? Reggie is there saying, you know, those guys, they say, come in, come in, come in, come in, as if they brush their teeth. He, he labeled some comedic people as comedic Christians, you know, and, and he says so many things all the time. I mean, it's, and, and that's me, that's me. I, you know, I, I'm not trying to deter anyone for any uh, um, uh, uh, endeavor whatsoever, but I'm just saying me personally, uh, I, it's, it's just something, you know, me associating with him at this point, it's, 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 I cannot do it. It's just, he's been disincumented people for the longest, and he obviously has hate towards Jabari. He, he's very jealous at Jabari. And and I agree with Mr. Vegas. He's the one who should be debating Jabari. He shouldn't send Garfield to be slaughtered because Garfield will get slaughtered, and it's just going to be a sad sight. And I'm pretty sure that after Garfield gets slaughtered, Reggie was kind of taking his distance away because Reggie would try anything to go uh, at uh, Jabari at this point. And Reggie says many times, I was there back then when those guys were in, in you know, uh, they were not there. I was there, you know, ask, blah, 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 blah. I was there. Those guys were not there. So he makes it, he lets it be known that he's feeling some kind of way about people who were not there when he was there. And then now they have a, uh, you know, large following. They have some organization and people who support them and appreciate them. He likes to talk about, you know, them making money when other people charge way more for the tools. And he's there, you know, he's my cash app, he's my cash app, you know, send me some cash app. And, and him being inconsistent, inconsistent and not stable, uh, when people send him some money, he will, you know, send some of the money. I mean, it's it's just um, so much I could say. And I'm, what I'm saying, you know, to, 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 uh, I'm trying to be diplomatic. Uh, some people might say slander, but everything that I'm saying, you know, the, most of it are cool, substantiated, you know, real quickly. You know, it's, it's, it's a known fact. He's been constant, constantly dissing to many people and it's, 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 it's uh there's a there's a personal issue yes that but undermines the situation with true. jabari it's, it's not a personal between him and jabari per se so yes it <laughs> it goes more in depth which i can't really that's up to them to discuss it, you know it's not really directly aimed at jabari uh, Jabari just hopped in. There's an old video on Sarnetta. Mm -hmm. He says, you're not going to disrespect my master teacher, blah, 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 after the master teacher has said something about uh, Reggie. Now, Both can I ask you, please, the... brother, I'm sorry yeah. to interject, but is it when the guy <clears throat> said that Reggie was dirty? Uh, unclean, sorry, unclean? Yeah, there's some stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and just keep keep going so I can, I can you know, yeah, my they piece know each other, and that was kind of a shot at Reggie first, right? Uh, and then you know Reggie basically wanted to debate him. That's when Jabari hopped up like, "You're not going to debate my master teacher, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. And that's kind of how it started to unravel. Even though it goes even further back than that, hmm. and they're you know they're they're semi friends, semi frenemies, semi you know uh, heated words. You know, like why would you call me dirty on you know a national program has many views? So you know, why would you say that? I'm sorry. Um, uh, uh, come again, please. Is it, basically like why Reggie was kind of like, why would you call me dirty? On I'm, clean. I'm clean. Yeah. yeah, why would you call me that? And this is before Reggie started taking shots at Jabari on the show. Mm -hmm. Why would you say something like that when you know I'm I'm I ain't I'm not disrespecting you or none of that. And I'm coming on here for you. So if we start it, we gotta start from the top, right? That's what's triggered everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. And and I'm Once glad you that, said that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I'm then Red, just, go ahead, go ahead. Right. And after he felt a certain way, Jabari felt a certain way. And so it's been going back and forth. And because the community started to, uh, to you know, they started feeling compelled towards Jabari. Uh, as Sonetta promoted him, as we should. And, you know, it the the issue wasn't. Oh, you're muted, brother. You're, I don't know if you can hear me, but I think you've muted yourself. Uh, I cannot mute you. Let me unmute you. But, oh, I cannot unmute you. No, you've muted yourself. You need there to you, unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah. Now, now we can hear you. <laughs> we can hear you now. Yeah. I'm putting your stuff in storage. So as that happened, remember, the 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 Saber Reggie was was in was in the Comet corner. He was he was about whoever's a shim suit. But he was attacked first. Uh, so now, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, now I, I I want to state for the record that before Reggie was labeled as unclean, and it's not the end of the world, you know, unclean is you know this could be worse. Like Jab Sanetta called Jabari, and I'm just quoting, he called him a bitch. Two days later, yeah. Reggie went on Sanetta, uh, and I don't know if I made a mistake, but Sanetta called Brother Reggie a bitch on Garfield's platform, and he even wrote that in the chat. Two days later, um, Reggie was on Sanetta's platform. So if someone, someone calls him uh, uh, unclean and, and, he, and he makes such an issue out of it, then how come when he was called a bitch, he's on uh, Sanetta's platform? There's, there's, a, there's a, a huge problem there. But before he was labeled unclean, Reggie was associated, now I don't know exactly what he said, but he was associated, associated with all those people and Garfield is one of the forerunners who used to diss and make fun of comedic people. I remember when they played uh, videos of Baba Heru because he used to sing. So they would put, you know, videos of him on stage singing and they would even make audio sound bites of people laughing, like, you know, really laughing like crazy, like rolling on the floor, like we say. Yeah. So that that was throwing shade, that was throwing salt, that was disrespectful. And they would put different statements. Also, I remember they quoted... Um, M. Fudishi, because I, there's a video of M. Fudishi where he, when he said one plus one equals three. That yeah. was a video excerpt. I don't know what the context of it. I mean, maybe he was talking about two people getting together and then having a child. I don't know. But they just put that like two, three second sound back, you know, and then yeah. they would like make fun of it and stuff like that. And um, um, I think maybe we have another brother that we know. You mentioned it earlier who was part of it but we have those guys who have the habit of dissing Kemeti people uh just like lately they've been trying to label the upper pseudo as well as um dr ben so after they've been doing that and sanjeti even came on the platform you know to tell reggie mm -hmm. you know you need to stop because you do that all the time you 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 pit, you know you put people against one another and then you sit back and watch the show and then reggie's answers w was well you know you get your teacher to speak to my teacher i mean i don't know where they do that at, but you know to each his own so I, I i think it's important to state that as well the guy didn't wake up and say okay i'm going to label reggie unclean reggie's been with those guys when they were you know really disrespecting for quite some time and that's public yeah, behind reggie, the scenes yeah go ahead brother yeah reggie defended him for dc during those times along with me um he also defended Dr. Ben and he also Dr. defended defended Shake and the joke during those times as well. Yeah, so, yeah but you see, you see, brother, you know, if, if 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 for example, I say you're a great brother, and then I say you're a fool, you know, and he, that's the way he is. He, he's 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 on the fence. He's he's he and he he, he will say, oh yeah, I'm defending that, and he likes to talk about Kemet on try. And the way he's speaking, it's as if you know he's he's one of the guy who put Kemet to the forefront or something like that. I mean, way before Kemet did. on try, there was Seti. And the first time he came in the picture, he was dissing Seti anyway. That's that's how I knew him. That's how most of the people knew him. You know what I'm saying? So um, he, yeah, go ahead, brother. He did put it put it on the forefront. A lot of people don't know what oh, he does. No, but no, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, okay, I thought you meant with Kemet on try. Okay, uh, my bad, my bad. <laughs> Bye -bye. But yeah, when we talk like uh, the Garfield situation, like Garfield and Jabari have a certain situation, right? And that's why I, there's certain things I can't we can't really address in full without you know 
and, and yeah, it was kind of you know, you, you know God, it and all that with Garfield and the female and yeah, Jabal but, doing yeah, but, what but, he, but, but Garfield, he, Garfield, he stated he per- out loud and publicly, which should have been in the dark. That's something that's confidential that you would keep between you and a female as a priest. Is certain, you know, no, no, but I'm sorry, Jabari did not talk about the, and he just said, I, he said, no, no, no. I know somebody that knows you, also, or uh, you know, something like that. He, he went in depth on the show talking about Garfield and the girl's relationship and said some other stuff concerning. So that was a public thing. That is, you know, like I said, that's between them, but. If you say that out loud publicly, and then here comes Garfield. Garfield felt a certain like, why would you air me out like that? Because you're talking in sexual nature. You're talking a few other things, and you're talking some other things that had came. Well, up. anybody who's a- seen that video, you can go peep it out and go into the small syncretisms yeah, of it. I, I, I would love to see that video. If somebody can direct me to to it, but. Yeah, yeah, but you know, he has so many videos. So, you know, anybody in the chat, anybody, you know, can send me an email to direct right. me to it, you know. But but it's safe to say that Jabari did not wake up one day and, and talked about that relationship between Garfield and somebody else. I'm pretty sure that Garfield has been throwing shots at Jabari and his organization, and particularly his master teacher, Baba Heru, for some time. Isn't oh, that yeah. safe to say? Yeah. So, you know, you don't start no one being on. You know, those guys think that it's all good. I mean, they've been dissing committee people for, for more than two years. So they think it's all good to diss committee people all the time and nobody's going to say anything. You know what I'm saying? And and, yeah. and Garfield recently said that uh, a guy from Jabari's organization who is now a priest have, has violated his daughter. It's a very strong accusation. And just say that like that. I'm like, where's all the smoke he's talking about? I mean, this guy sits down. And and he makes videos upon videos with I want all the smoke. Yeah, but that's information. Is one thing is information. No, I, I, no, is I, no, I understand. I understand. I agree with you. It's information. Yeah. But personally, he definitely. said he, he he said someone violated his daughter. Right. That's so what I'm if, saying. Even man. if even if he doesn't want to pull up on the guy, how come he's not addressing that? Why would you this? You see, Jabari is a priest. So he has a lot of energy to this Jabari. Baba Heru is somehow, some way, uh, a, a, a priest probably, you know. But those are peaceful guys who did not violate Garfield's daughter. But the guy who violated Garfield's daughter, Garfield is very silent about it. And that's why lately I've been saying, okay, maybe his hate is not towards just um, Kemetic people, but towards people who are not rocking with homosexuality. Because as we've seen, one of his affiliates, you know, who used to be a Nuabian, Dr. Dr. York thought that Paul was a homosexual. So maybe they have a new kind of uh, um, religion where it's cool to be, you know, somehow, somewhere, because <laughs> once again. And that could be make... on Garfield. But Garfield, Garfield is like we talk a Sabre Reggie, not Garfield situation per se. Reggie is part of um, the, 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 the pseudos who teach that rise of volcano and, uh, and, um, Elijah in Egyptian text. He's listed on the website. The last time I checked, he's still listed on the website. You know, the, the University of Amen, where you, we have the fake linguist Osahim or fake, you know, who said that Diop was wrong, that Rekeri Amen is wrong, that Diop Benga is wrong, that Diop Benga didn't have any, doesn't have any degree in linguistics. Come again? He said Diop Benga was wrong. <laughs> Uh, Osaimo Fek said that uh, uh, Obenga is wrong, Rekeri Amen is wrong, James P. Allen is wrong. I mean, the list is like, you take. follow Obenga's work. Why would he? That's crazy. But, and, 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 yeah. Yeah. If he's got a course on there, that's one thing. Um, yeah, the information, though, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I ain't seen all that. Because I've never been on their website, probably. I'd have to go over there and check it out. Um, but concerning just the Reggie situation, like him and Jabari, they got something they need to pan out, sit down about, and really, him and uh, uh, Brother Samaj need to sit down and pan and handle that out. 
Well, exactly. you know, I mean, honestly, I understand and I appreciate your point of view. And obviously, you know, you, you have a good relationship with Reggie and it's a good thing. But Reggie is a troublemaker. He's the snake. He's a fence rider. Um, and and he, he has caused too much trouble over the years. And this is not something that lasted for a few months, you know. But, <laughs> you know, but, you know, time will reveal. Time will reveal. And people will see. Because this thing's been going on for years, like I said, and it will surely not stop now. After Garfield will get destroyed, Reggie will look for some other um, guy in the pig, you know, um, to, to just go, you know, and, and, and get slaughtered. Uh, he, he will look for anybody that can help him um, to go against chemetic people, you know. And, and, and you know, there's, there's one thing I'd like to say also is that... Um, Reggie likes to talk about, you know, people not knowing the meta nature. We need to know the meta nature and stuff like that. But when he's talking, or Garfield's talking about the Christian stories, we never hear them talking about the the the, the Greek texts, you know, the original Greek, or the any Latin text or Hebrew text. So there is some double standard there. there. Yeah, that could be brought up. That could definitely be brought up in a discussion concerning those who are, uh, you know, delve into the text. But not really because other like Garfield, if, if he's a Christian, yes. Reggie's not a Christian. So, no. So they're making an outside critique where if you profess to be a priest. Wouldn't you think a priest would at least know the higher? Yeah, yeah, no, oh, no, we thought I agree, and you know, we said it many times on the air, so yeah. so yeah, I like but, the bar, but but but, 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 but you got but, the no better than that, sure. You but, but say he, you're he, the high priest, yeah, when but he knows a high priest, there's a list of things that we know about, right? Yes, yes, but once again, he knows the better than that, just have uh, he doesn't have a high level and he's learning, you know, he, 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 he should, yeah, he you should, know, basics we can work it, but I've never seen him. To, to to show it I've never seen him read anything and when just a simple thing when Zion Lex pulled up everything starts with thou shall and not thou shall not and that's not even in the uh the 42 virtues of my art when you do something like that and you profess to be the tep awi and we have nebwawi who is a tep awi meaning the head man or the head priest the chief priest of the Asarian temple we've also got a chief priestess for heru her and we know their duties and we know what they can do in order to have that title mm. so I, 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 I agree I, I agree that you know as a committed yeah. priest you need to have a, a particular level and yeah. uh, Ned, Ned, feel free to come yeah. back you were disconnected yeah. but 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 he doesn't Criticize only Jabari or priests for that. He's criticizing Kemetic people in general. But, you know, uh, yeah, you know. So, I mean, you know, by all means, you know, whatever you want to do, with Reggie, you know, feel free, you know. But uh, I don't wish that to happen. But I think some some way down the line, you will see another side of Reggie. And, and I have seen it for a long time. Mr. Vegas has seen it. And other people have, have, have seen it also. And um, uh, I mean, when people show you how they are, Believe them, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, <laughs> and 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 I and I believe him the way he's uh, behaving. You know his behavior. I mean, we, we were cool that two weeks a week ago, two weeks ago we were cool, and just because I didn't uh, not agree about you know their stance, all hell broke broke loose. You know, so uh, let me know when you're ready. Yeah, okay. So, um, brother Samka, thank you very much for being there. Uh, Ned Neb is ready to 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 start with his uh, presentation. So. You know, uh, feel free to to hang on. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, well, brothers and sisters, I'm I'm going to rename the uh, the last stream with the original title, um, and I'm going to change the thumbnail again. So, give me one moment so I can do that. Give me one moment. No. Now I'm going to do the renaming. Hi, I'm Professor Dana Hora.
So let's rename now the thumbnail. To look at it, where is it? Oh, yeah, do it from my mobile phone. <clears throat> yes, I did from my mobile phone. So I'm going to send the thumbnail. I won't be long, brothers and sisters. Um, download that's the one I'm sending it okay so I'm gonna download it and then change the thumbnail so there download and now i'm changing the thumbnail oh am i am i sharing it oh <laughs> sorry <laughs> oh dang so now what's the screenshot screenshots boom Okay, so now that it is done, okay, so our brother will come. I've let him know that I'm ready. Um, well, while our brother comes on, I think he will come probably brief, uh, shortly. We have quite a few comments. Um, uh, well, it's, it's quite a fair bit of, uh, of comments, really. So while we're waiting for our brother to come on, I'm going to go through the comments. So we have Panther Bad Milaki wrote, we need to decipher the true version of the Book of the Dead from the original papyrus. Oh, earlier there was a question about the papyrus, but I don't know which papyrus you were talking about. Or maybe it was after that he left that message. Um, coming forth by day or Book of Emerging Forth into the Light. Um, well, I don't know what you mean by true version, but anybody that knows me. Oh, our brother Ned Nev is here. So... Hotep sent E. Can you hear me? Yes, Hotep. I apologize about my lateness, man. My son, you know, emergency. Yeah, I hope he's doing well, brother. You know, uh, no, no, no worries at all. You know, we're here with Shining. I have time, so it's all good, my brother. So, so um, gonna, yes, go, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. We're going to do it on this panel or another one, the, uh, the, the other panel with the picture. Uh, no, it's this one because what happened is that you know, uh, because I had no update, so I've changed the title and I've changed the, the picture. But what I did just before I told you that I'm ready, I've put the original title and I've also changed the picture. But it will take probably a few minutes for the, the picture to update, you know. Yes, so whenever you're ready to share your screen, you know, uh, feel free. You know, I've, I've read your LinkedIn uh, bio. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah, yes. And it's actually also in the description of uh, this video. So anybody who wants to see the presentation, you have the link like I've shown at the end of the bio, and it will link you to our brother Neb's uh, YouTube account, which is Kedika Peer Review. As a matter of fact, I will show you what our brother's getting his presentation prepared. I mean, whatever he wants to present prepared. So um, if I go there, oh, actually, <laughs> I should have clicked there. See, when, uh, whenever I talk about the community, I mean, you need to have, I think, a uh, thousand subscribers in order to have a, a community, or maybe they've changed the rule lately. Oh, yeah, okay, our brother is, is getting ready. Uh, so you need a certain amount of subscribers. So then you can share some 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 messages, some links, some pictures, you know. So um, 
that's the current live stream that we are on. And here you can see the description. You can see the description that I've read earlier, the bio of our brother. And this is the link to the uh, presentation at the University of uh, Abome in uh, the Republic of uh, Benin or Benin, depends on your pronunciation. And this is the channel here. Peer review, is it sharing? Yes, peer review channel. Kedika, the peer review science channel. So I'm going to share the link in the chat. So everybody has Red Names verse, uh, website. So Kedika, peer review. I'll make it shorter, you know. I hope uh, it's okay. Kedika, peer review. So whenever you hear Kedika, it's K E D I K A. That's Ned and Neb's channel. All right, so I've shared the link in the chat and um, you can see what the brother is all about. So are you preparing your your stuff, brother, or you want to start now? Yeah, I already uh, have it prepared. I was waiting you to uh, finish. Uh, okay, well, go ahead, brother. You know, the floor is yours. Yeah, I just want to give a response to... Um, Dr. Issa and Dr. Faraji. I'm a, a BB2Me member, so y'all can go on my LinkedIn, uh, share my LinkedIn account. My whole bio is there. I'm 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 trained in linguistics. Uh I do work in linguistics. Uh so I'm someone who is not not familiar with everyone in the community knows that I'm I've been doing you know comparative linguistics for a while now professionally um uh, uh, top universities um my research partner is a linguistic professor in Nubian language and he is no muriotic and none of that you muriotic is not fully translated and all of that uh it's still missing stuff with uh muriotic and stuff like that so that's not a language you can be comparing with Medunesha. Medunesha is fully deciphered. And Merodic is not. So my teacher deals with Merodic as well. He's a Nubian professor. He deals with Nubian Dongalabi. His name is Dr. Nazir Sasi. I know you heard the brother uh, Afro Stali speak about him a few times on here. Uh, another research partner, I'm also uh, the, the head guy in the Negro Egyptian Linguistics Group, which uh, Obadeli Cambo is also uh, works there as like kind of a head guy to keep everything in check. So both of us, uh, he gave me permission to start a, Dr. Obadeli Cambo gave me permission to start a Negro Egyptian Linguistics Group where all of the top linguists are, are in one group. So I'm familiar with a lot of these linguists. Uh, they are actually, most of them are on a BB Timmy. So my LinkedIn uh, account, it shows my background. Uh, I've been enrolled in a VLC program for Marksburg University for two years in historical linguistics. And I suppose to be, after I finish that program, we'll be going to the University of Leiden. And then um, as I get familiar, just so I can have success in the field of linguistics, I will go to UMass, transfer my credits to UMass. That's what you do when you go to college is that you don't have to finish college right there. I mean, once you get your credits, you have your credits for your school for life. And two, you get enough credits to graduate, get your associate, if you're an undergrad, associates, bachelors, et cetera. So on this subject, everyone knows that this would I deal with. I submit papers in this field of linguistics. Uh, I shared a company of award-winning linguists like Obadeli Cambon on a BB Timmy Negro Egyptian linguistics, a linguistic platform to learn African languages and linguistics. And also I was trained, people forget, I was also trained for years by Dr. Riketi Amin. I was a student of Dr. Riketi Amin. And Dr. Riketi Amin trained me in basic linguistics, uh, which is dealing with uh, the understanding the IPA, transliteration, uh, very beginner stages of metanetric grammar to some advanced uh, stages of grammar. 
you know, like the Sedgum F forms, et cetera, et cetera, the, diff the different Sedgum F forms, let me say, uh, the way the syntax of Egyptian is constructed. So uh, I have uh, experience in the grammar of Madhu Nature, being my teacher was, has a master's degree in linguistics. She has also a master's in Egyptology. She was in a PhD program for University of Chicago, decided to do private courses. Now, as I tell people in college, private courses count. I don't know why people in this community are lying, saying that private court your private courses don't count. That's a lie. Uh, you could take those private courses, and if you have experience, most universities accept, give you credit for your experience in the matter. You don't have to have a degree. That's why I say you don't have to have a degree because a university still can give you credit for your experience. You can go to UMass, all right? Now, I'm not saying uh, you can't put in the work. You have to put in work, but experience do matters. It, it, it's, it's not the, the top, like as Obadeli Cambone, Dr. Riccati, and none of that, because they are advanced PhD, went from undergrad to a graduate. But, right, experience does count. Don't let nobody say experience don't count. Don't let nobody put you down if you're pursuing a certificate in a credible school if you're pursuing a certificate most universities accept that as experience <laughs> i don't know why people in this community you gotta have a phd like that's strict it's so that's so that's so biased and strict but in other fields and things of that nature and other science organizations institutions they accept experience they give you credits to graduate so you know, let's keep it like that. So I'm someone who is experienced in what we say historical linguistics. Historical linguistic, I have kind of like an intermediate level understanding due to my being around people who already, uh, yo, was sharp. Dr. Ricchetti is one of the, the sharpest people when it comes to the language I have ever been around. Her, Dr. Obadeli Cambo, and Dr. Sati are the three major reasons I'm at where I'm at right now. There's no other people. Uh, they, they are the reasons they hard on me and they criticize me to get me better. And this is what I'm going to do with Dr. Issa. I, I, I'm going to put everything in perspective is that I love Dr. Faraj. I'm familiar with his work. He wrote work on Murray Odic and well, Old Nubian, which is the language I'm, I study. I know grammar of Nubian. I compare the Nubian grammar systems with the Medinetra grammar systems with other sub-Saharan African grammar systems. So I'm experienced with Nubian. So there's no excuse here. You know, there's no excuse. Um, and I'm going to tell people there's no excuse because of, of no one here not having a background in the subject. So we can't play the excuse game of you don't have a background of the subject, et cetera. So as I am criticized in this field and uh, I send peer review in and I get criticized. You know, I, I get fact checked. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I think, like Dr. Cambone said, the heavy, the load on your head makes your neck stronger, right? So my neck, you see how big my neck is, it's strong. So it's strong because Dr. Ricchetti tell me when I'm wrong, you know, and I change it respectfully. Uh, over Daddy Cambone, definitely. You know, we're trying to submit, so he's he don't play. You know what I mean? Even with me, and I'm a BB to me member, so I want to get it out of he's being biased or something like. You know, that's that's the narrative. The narrative is, I'm gonna tell you the truth. In this community, um, when you correct them, they get angry at you. This is the only community that's like that. When you go to science, uh, like if you go to a school in linguistics or Egyptology or any private schools, you're going to get corrected. You will get corrected. It's, you can't alleviate from it. See, you will be corrected. There's nothing wrong with being corrected, only in this community. Why is being corrected wrong in this community and not the science world? See that? Why? What's wrong? What's going on? See, that's why I always say it's something underlining because everyone is fearful of being corrected on the issue. Like my brother corrected me when I was here the other day. He said I was the first one who, who did that. And he's correct. And did I concede? Yes. I said, you know what? You was. It's nothing wrong with being corrected. It make you sharp. 
um, it makes your neck stronger. More pressure in your head makes your neck stronger. All right. So we ain't doing this to disrespect uh, Dr. Issa, none of his accomplishments. Uh, I have no personal vendetta. I think they are excellent scholars. I support everything they're doing. Uh, but as a historical linguist, someone who's, you know, experienced uh, professionally, scholastically, academically in that particular field and trained in it, uh, you know, certain words you can't use in your paper. So I'm going to go over the paper here. We ain't going to do a bunch of he say, she say. We just go to the, the source. Uh, I'll give another source, show you why, and that's that, right? Uh, so here's the website. I have a few problems with this. Uh, the, the problems I have with this uh, is that Professor Obadeli Campbell, not to belittle anyone, not to do this. I do this for constructive criticism. I'm going to make it bigger. It's a problem. It's a problem here. The problem here is that, one, before we can discuss on who's right and who's wrong, this is not a peer review paper. And what I mean by peer review paper, it may be reviewed by his friends. That's why they do blind reviews. They do blind reviews. Obadeli Cambone critiqued this knowledge inside of a respected linguistic publication. Respected linguistic publication that has a DOI number. This doesn't have a DOI number. And this wasn't in a scientific publication to respond back. It's only that's like if if someone says something wrong about my my data that is peer reviewed, and he start his own nonprofit, whatever he's starting, LLC, nonprofit, whatever, and then he write a paper there. Does that count? I mean, not to be disrespectful. I mean, one is doing it on a peer review system in a journal where one is doing it on a corporate on a corporate level it, it doesn't it doesn't it that's not scientific to me when you do a response man you want to do a response in a top linguistic journal and review it back so professor Cabon do not even have to respond to this paper scientifically i'm being honest with you scientifically he don't even have to respond uh number two is why does Nechene agree with Professor Cambone? Was Professor Cambone biased in any way? No, he was not biased. I read this whole response. I read his and Salem Faraji is not a professor. Uh, he is not skilled in Meriotic Kush. He do not know how to translate Meriotic Kush. All right. He is not a Meriotic Kush scholar, like as Dr. Ricchetti is a Medinetcher. Specifically, have master's degrees in Medunetra, where you have uh, Obadeli Cambon, who have high skills in Medunetra. See, in linguistics, proof of, of that. Uh, he is uh, Professor Salam Faraji is a respected uh, scholar, but he is not a linguist, and he tells you that here in his paper. Of course, we know uh professor uh it is not not a linguist all right where's my issue with this because i'm gonna respond because this is not this don't have a doi number so i got the, i can I, i'm in my right to respond uh you know why i have a problem with it i'm not gonna play the hocus pocus waste your time with 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 the narrative with the narrative that that's what pseudo linguists do they get you with a narrative that is attractive just like Afro-Asiatic. They said that about Afro-Asiatic and all historical linguistic textbooks. That is attractive. The idea is, in fact, attractive. A lot of this stuff is attractive. Be honest, man. Think about it. Isn't Anunnaki coming from another solar system creating human beings attractive? At least it's attra I mean, it's attractive to me. And aliens building pyramids, that's so attractive in fantasy. It attracts you. So a lot of pseudo-linguistics, they have to have a good narrative to pull you in away from the method. We are concerned with the method. 
we're not concerned with narratives. I am, as a historical linguist, someone who's a professional in the field, who works in the field, submit papers, works around these guys, we're not concerned with narratives. When you come to the Negro Egyptian linguistics group on BB Timmy, narratives is not what I'm concerned with. Professor Campbell is not concerned with narratives. We are concerned with methods. What method are you using? That's what I want to know. So, actually, I like the stuff that he said. Reading his response, I love it. I just have a problem with two sections. That's it. The two sections I have a problem with the, the is, is the sections where he began to try to explain how he is not a linguist, but he is trying to say something is a cognate. That's where I have a problem. If you're not a linguist, why not get the best linguist right now, which is Dr. Obadetti Campbell, to assist you with that? And also the choice of words. Uh, linguists, we use a choice of words. We never say things are cognate. We don't talk like that. In historical linguistics, we don't say cognate unless we have a proof that it is a cognate because a cognate is very difficult to establish in linguistics. People think it's easy, but it's difficult. It takes years to show numerous cognate. Cognates are very difficult. Then there are different types of cognate, different types of them. So what type of cognate? You can't just say cognate. You know, you got to say what type of cognate you're dealing with. If you say this is maybe, this is the what I'm trying to get to Dr. Issa and Dr. Faraji is that the choice of words for me is what got you that harsh critic in Ghana General Linguistic. It, it, it has to be. The choice of words you're using, you're using linguistic terms and you have no uh, linguistic methodology. And that was even said in the paper. So I don't even have to go through that because they said that themselves, that they wasn't linguists in this paper. And they said that maybe Professor Cambone can help. And yeah, see, that's what he's doing. He's trying to help. Uh, that's what we do in linguistics. <laughs> I mean, it's a harsh field. This is not an easy, everybody can't do this field. If everybody could do the field, you'll have everybody in it. Everybody publishing papers. Everybody don't publish these papers. It's very few people publish papers in scientific linguistic journals. See that? And one, and I don't deal with the narrative speakers, people who, you know, they talk so much with no background in the subject. So I'm just telling, 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 uh, uh, Dr. Issa, is that it's the choice of words that is being used because in linguistics, there are different types of cognates. You have to explain what are false friends, false cognates, uh, potential cognates, cognates, and, and uh, is numerous types. So if, if they would have said this, I'm in, and I'm whatever that, that it also, that is pseudo because it's no vowels in these systems, man. It's no vowels in these systems. These transliteration systems is a lot of different types of them. In one system, they may say it's a vowel. In one system, they say it's a consonant. We don't know what, what it is concerning these systems. The one thing we do know is that we have Coptic, and we can verify it with living languages like Sean Polion did. That's what Sean Polion did. He verified things with Coptic, okay? Um... As far as looking at the data, now let, let's, let's go here to see my point, right? You see this? See this? Look. Consequently, this study establishes that the words I'm in, you see how there's a vowel there. I have an issue with that. There is no e vowel. That's a Hebrew insertion. Everyone knows that. You read all of the uh, Egyptological grammar books. They insert the Hebrew E in between the consonants. The so called, we don't even know if they're the real consonants. See that? Because Medinesh is a dead language. You, it has to be reconstructed. <laughs> so, anyone who, who knows linguistics know that Medinesh is a dead language. And we don't know nothing about it concerning that. We only know the grammar because from Coptic. Coptic is the final stage. And also the Rosetta Stone, etc. We have other documents that can help us assist with it, right? But if you say consequently, this study establishes that the word Amen, he has a E, a vowel. 
Amun, another vowel, you in between a a. Um, which one is it? Um, or cognates. So all of these words with different vowel sounds are cognate with uh, the word emming. So I agree that Amun is a could be a sub-Saharan African uh, deity and that they did attach certain things to names. But when we're digging into saying that these things are cognate, that is a lot you have to do to prove a cognate. You can't just say cognate. Or you have to say, Professor Issa, okay, I borrow the term cognate from linguistics because you can borrow nomenclature from other studies and use it, but you have to make that clear in your paper that I am borrowing this term cognate, but I'm not using it as linguists use it because if you don't explain it when a historical linguistic reads your text, they get confused. You have to let people know or put a footnote that, look, um, you, um, I'm saying cognate, but I'm not saying it is the same way that linguists say genetic. A lot of geneticists that are not skilled in linguistics, they get mad at me sometimes on my Facebook page, Brother Afro Stiley, right? Because I use genetic relationship between languages. So they thinking I'm speaking about genetic. In all historical linguistic texts, we use the term genetic. And this is historical linguistics in a comparative study of African languages. We use genetic, and we say that we borrowed that. We make it clear that we borrowed that term, so we so people won't get confused who actually study genetics. That wasn't made clear. You're using the term cognate as if as if these two words are cognate, which I don't doubt they they probably are cognate. That's what I'm saying. They. Probably are. That's what Obadelli Campbell is stating is that he's not knocking the good work these guys did in his paper, but you can't say that. You, you have to say maybe, or we're making Apple dicta statements and without no grounds of methodology and how you got that kind of. There is a method in historical linguistics to establish true cognitive. So it might be a cognate, but is it a true cognate? Is a different thing. Because we know in linguistics, uh, aerial diffusion. A god can be borrowed. A Nubian deity can be borrowed from other now Valley Africans. See that? So what, what explains the borrowing? If it's borrowing, it, it might be a cognate. It might be borrowing. You have to do that work. Or you have to say, this needs further discussion by competent people in the field. Don't you say it's cognate without providing methodological uh, evidence on why it's cognate. That's the issue of Professor Campbell uh, and my issue too. So you see that consequently the study establishes that the words, I mean, we read it here. The words, I don't have to do all of that stuff. So the words, I mean, I mean, I mean which one is it? That's what I want to know because you can't do that in, historical linguistics, all these different types of, <laughs> which one is it? Which one are you saying? And also are cognates. He's using the word, let me make it bigger. So we won't think we're tripping and being unfair and all of that. Professor Campbell is not unfair. I'm a member of a BB team and he's hard on me just as well. See that? You see that word, y'all? Cognates. When you use that term right there, that's what's getting everyone's confused. Excuse me. <clears throat> Bear with us, brothers and sisters. Our brother will be right back. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Um, so that word cognate gets a lot of people in trouble because in linguistics, there are numerous linguistic methods. But I'm not going to get into linguistic methodology. It's no point because the authors recognized that they were they are not linguists. They, they recognize in this response. All right, so let's go there. First, we're going to go there that they recognize themselves that they are not linguists. That's why I'm coming with respect. I'm going to respect to Dr. Issa, and I'm giving him a fair and unbiased assessment. So let's look up.
right? All right, so this is what they say, yet his position is fundamentally a phantom argument. No, it's not a phantom argument. You say that their words are cognate. You have to prove that they are cognate. That's all he's saying. All right. Uh, another thing uh, you see here, situating the word imen. You see how this don't have no vowels? He's using all uh, different types of consonants. Uh, some can argue that this is a J, right? Depending on what transliterations we use. So everyone doesn't, everyone doesn't transliterate this as an I. Some uh, the German scholars translate it with a J. That transliteration system, they will have a J instead of an I. So you will have to reconstruct this first before any type of comparative analysis can be made in his in our field of historical linguistics. We do not compare transliteration systems that are uh, that belong that are being that are being represented by dead languages to living languages. That's that's not the comparative method. Anyone doing that, yes, will be if you submit your work will be considered pseudo. That's for Medunetra has this has to have a star form next to it, an asterisk. And it has to be reconstructed, as I was, you know, as Professor Campbell said, Dr. Ricchetti teaches that. Every scholar teaches who has elite level understanding of linguistics. All right. Now it says, we also specifically acquired with Dr. Campbell about if the fundamental premise of our book is correct. And what would be recommended as the most unequivocal linguistic evidence to enhance our study in the future? You see that he's he has to ask the professor, how can it help? Only thing I can say is that only thing you have to do is let people know that this is a preliminary example. You have to tell people uh these are potential cognitive. These are, I think they are they are probable, but more discussion has to be done. Don't just say they are cognitive because you will get blasted in historical linguistics. You can't do that. All right, let's, let's go. Again, you see this? I mean, this is where I mean about uh, no methodology is none. He's just saying, I'm in, I mean, and I'm on. He's using capital A, capital A now. First, it was an I. Now, as he's using English, he's using a A. Which one is it? it we don't know. You, you understand one I, some use a J, now is a capital A. More confusion. Egyptian itself has to be reconstructed for any type of comparative analysis to take place. So it says, in a con culture is a linguistic derivative. Now, where's the evidence of that? As a linguist, I'm someone who works in a field, so a person can't say that, I, that I'm doing this under being biased what i'm saying is if it's a a con culture how is a con culture a linguistic derivative you see what i mean people in linguistics we are trained to pay attention to detail how can your culture be a linguistic derivative how can someone build on that and answer how can a culture be linguistic a linguistic derivative if we're talking about linguistics Right, we're not speaking about cultural elements here. We're speaking specifically about linguistics. How can culture be a linguistic derivative? So it's things like this that you can't mix. Culture, genetics, uh, these other fields, anthropology, archaeology, with linguistics. Linguistics is its own field. The problem is that we try to compare. We we are smashing everything together, and it's not scientific. So in this response, he provided no proof for I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, in a con culture is a linguistic derivative. How can you prove culture is a linguistic derivative of the ancient Egyptian language? That doesn't make sense. Uh, how? Now, if you say it's cultural borrowings from Kemet 
in a con i can understand it as he links yes they are borrowings with the languages of kemet and ghana you have words that's from egypt that's borrowed into words of the so-called niger congo languages everyone knows this this was known back then in the in the 80s i mean in the before then that's why greenberg of uh, created Afro-Asiatic. he added african languages to the Afro-Asiatic uh, branch. Some of those languages are spoken in the Niger Congo, so-called Niger Congo region. Get my point? So what, what, what are we doing here? This is no method. So it's not a disrespect either. It's just as a linguist, what are you doing? I don't understand. It's no method. So that's all. It, it's no, no one's disrespecting nobody, I don't think, right? And it is for this reason that we describe Dr. Campbell's criticism, although constructive in terms of insinuating the need for appropriate linguistic methods. Then he say as a phantom argument. That's all that's being said. No, that's that's you know, that's why I say this Whitney will pass peer, a peer review. All right. Then he says this. Old Kwame Ose's original pamphlet is not a perfect or exhaustive, and he does not commit methodological errors. He, and he does commit methodological errors regarding linguistics. You see my point. So there we can we can all agree it's errors. <laughs> Why you don't even gotta respond back if Dr. Campbell is telling you you have errors in a peer review, man, and you actually say yes, it's errors. Where do we go? Why are we emotional? about this uh we could like you said in the paper of coming together but we don't want to build with each other everybody got this tumor enza i say tumor enza this european style of government governance among each other that's our fault that that's that's why we are losing we have this ego of capitalism in our soul and i'm not saying everything is is about money and all of that for everybody i'm just saying that the way we are in competition with each other. That type of system came from like a Europeanized type of system of government, of, of structure, economic structure, where their structures are more capitalistic. They have a lot of different structures that be, due to the environment, uh, those systems evolving uh, over there. They, they are the or originators of capitalism. And it, it began in Europe. That's how we govern each other with alien systems so it's a brother is trying to help you you think he's trying to smash you he's not he's just saying linguistic methodology is inaccurate you can't say that you can't say amen is this amen i agree with that idea like over there campbell would apple stally would dr ricketty would who wouldn't agree that they are possibly but we will agree that that's probably they probably the same because yes they probably have cultural co continuity with each other yes but then we're going to start saying can you show me where so we can start sharing your work so this not no uh don't take it so personal it's not that serious um see uh let's let's make it clear see i'm using this with their own words this is not my words so i don't want nobody saying i'm being biased and this is the section on transdisciplinary scholarship and they are telling you that expertise. All scholars will have to say that background, like myself. I set my background here in linguistics. I mean, everybody had to talk about that background. So it says, what they are. It says, doctors, Issa and Faraji, tasks in this process is as historians, not linguists. So this shit in this like conversation i mean if you if you're saying if you're saying you cognate you're using linguistic terms but you're not a linguist that's the issue all right they said it themselves that okay. was Issa and faraji task in this process is as historians not linguists can i say something real quick sure you know on the website of the book uh uh, origin of the word amen.com or the origin of the word amen.com. Um, Professor Osei is introduced as a linguist. Just wanted to say that. 
for the record because this response is done by Dr. Jaisa and oh. apparently also Dr. Salim Faraji. We never really know who's writing where. Right. But Osei is also an author. So apparently he did not contribute to the response. However, he's one of the author of the book and he is described on the website of the book as a linguist. It's just for the record. Because it's somebody I don't really want to name uh, who made a critique of Dr. Campbell's critique. And then he went on for quite some time saying, well, they never said that they are linguists. They never introduced themselves as linguists. But you know, for the record, on the website of the book, Professor Osei is introduced as a linguist, amongst other uh, qualifications as well. But I'm talking about Dr. Issef Faraji. Doctor, they already did you can you read you can you read brother about who you talking about here in the first sentence? Dr. Isa and Faraji. No, I'm talking about him. Oh Kwame Ose in the first sentence. Oh, you want me to show you on the website? Yeah, that's who you talk. No, 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 yeah. I already know. Oh, okay. okay. But you see this? Oh Kwame Ose, that's what they talked about, right? Uh... that's on the website. Oh, yeah, uh, the, at the beginning of the paragraph, yes. Yeah. Yes. So can you read it? Oh, Kwame Osei's original pamphlet is not a perfect or exhaust. It's not a perfect or exhaustive. And he does commit methodological errors regarding linguistics. So case closed, right? Did I say that? Did you say that? No. Even though he's a linguist, he commit errors. That yes. is what they said. I don't yes. understand why the bashing is, and they are agreeing with everything over David Campbell, uh, Professor Campbell is stating. I, it's weird. It's just what, emotionalism. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you because when Dr. J, Jaisa came on my platform, mm. uh, I think twice I was trying to tell him, well, I actually told him, but even yourself in your response to Dr. Combo, you said that you made some errors. He was like, nah, 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 nah. And then he was going on other right. stuff. So there is, I agree with you themselves. They, I mean, whoever wrote that response, apparently Dr. Jaisa and Dr. Faraji, Salim Faraji, they, they both admitted that there were some mistakes. So, you know, it's not the end of the world. You know, it shouldn't be a I mean, it's problem. not our fault. I mean, we are looking at their response. And this is a linguist. Linguists are not exempt from doing uh, crappy work. Look at Greenberg. People act like Greenberg is a top bipper in all of this here. He top bipping. Greenberg. I don't dislike Greenberg. Greenberg is excellent. Actually, the multilateral comparative analysis is a great tool for probing languages, but we don't use that for genetically relating languages. So why would I use multilateral comparative analysis to relate languages? So Greenberg was a boss with, with this, man. So he wasn't a little boy. And he made grave errors. What, what linguists don't make errors? So, you know, even though he's a linguist, mean nothing. They already admitted methodologically errors. So my thing is, why couldn't those errors be expressed? It should be, that's unbiased. Like if I write a paper, I'm going to tell you the good points and then I'm going to say the bad points and limitations of my paper, like the comparative method. They are good points of the comparative method and also they are points where we need upgrading with the comparative method. It's unbiased. So that's being unbiased. Let us know the methodological errors. Don't just say, oh, if now it was errors, you put that in your paper. All of the errors, you publish your paper, put it in a, all of the errors to let scholars know a discussion. You don't say cognate. That's not what you say. And we about to look up why you don't say cognate. And I'm going to look it up. Not I ain't even going to go to Britannica. I'm not going to go to a historical. I'm going to go to a historical linguistic textbook to tell you, to show people just because you have words that look alike. Like you have Hawaiian, you have words in Hawaiian, and you have words in English that looks alike mean the same that don't mean they are derived 
from the same source. When you say the word cognate, cognate is you already established this with systematic sound correspondences. And you did that rigorous work of reconstructing Medu nature. And then you reconstructed the proto ancestor. And you are saying now they are cognates. That's how historical ling linguists use cognate when we already reconstructed the daggone term, even when we're using sound correspondences to relate languages, uh, that is still potential cognates. It's not a cognate yet, and two, it is derived from its proto-ancestor. So it is very difficult even for a linguist to determine cognates, let alone people who are not linguists, admittedly. <laughs> I mean, they admittedly said they weren't linguists, so I don't even, that's why I'm not being brutal. You know, they're being honest. They're saying that we're not linguists. I respect that. They like they like assume imho fake where assume imho fake will say here linguists, then you went on you go on the thing, here damn software developer. So these mistakes are now being understood by us, is that they are not linguists. These are why you make these so great of mistakes. And I tell, and I'm gonna give Dr. Issa a course to take for introduction that will help him with his work to prove it with linguistic methods he asked for help assistance that we should come together in uniform and i agree with we shouldn't be trying to embarrass each other either but we shouldn't be making apodictic statements because we are in combat with european imperialism imperialism scholarship and 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 they on the top of that game right now and yo if you have to be on top of your shit, that's why i respect over delhi Cambon. Because he makes my work better. He peer reviewed my data. Make sure I'm good. He he do that to a lot of people around him. So we got to give Obadali Campbell a hand clap. Uh, make a a hand clap. For criticizing this work. For criticizing my work. Criticizing everyone's work. All right. Still iron sharp as iron in this. This ain't, this ain't, a lot of us was raised by women. And... You know, I mean, a lot of us was raised by women that have fathers in, so we highly emotional when it comes to certain things. Now let's let's continue. Uh, so we already know Brother Stiley has the brother with the beautiful French voice has stated that Ose's original pamphlet is not a perfect or exhaustive, and he does not commit method, he does commit methodological errors regarding linguistics. Case closed right there. I'm not even you know, this is you're making a linguistic argument and then you already is urban. So uh that this insult and variety test in this process is as historians and not linguists. That's another issue. Because if you're a historian, stick with his, the history part, the cultural aspect, the history part, and you still gotta explain borrowings, but stay up far away from saying cognitive, unless unless you're using it and you're borrowing it from linguistics and you're saying, Well, this is a potential. Cotton. So when you say cotton, that's kind of confusing if you're making that clear for us. All right. All right. This is also good to read. Dr. Issa, throughout his academic career and extensive travel in numerous countries in Africa over a 25 year period, has never represented himself as a specialist in historical and comparative linguistics. See that? We didn't say that. They said that. So we can't, you, you can't get mad at us. Don't get mad at my brother. Then he says, this is a major, then he start talking about the disagreements, so, so, things, things like that. He said, it is narrowly defined by the constraints of his disciplinary expertise linguistics. See that? So this is that, this how they argue back. Linguists, we don't argue back like that. We don't try to throw shots and he's constraint, um, phantom argument, all of everything, but show us the method. We, haughtiness, you know, earlier. Haughtiness. Yeah. <laughs> They already admitted that it's errors, but yet they keep calling Dr. Campbell names. That's how you know they're not linguists. Uh, right there. 
We don't do that. We show methods. And I'm going to show you why Amen is not cognate in all of that, right? He said, the content of Dr. Campbell's review is 22 pages. He devotes 10 pages to analyzing and exposing the linguistic errors of our discussion of means and normal in another two pages dedicated to one of our glossary entries entitled Amy and them Kings. Why does Dr. Campbell spend at least 50% of his review critiquing a discussion that only amounts to about two and a half pages in a book that is nearly 90 pages? Easy because your method, he's only, he is only criticizing method. Method, that's it. It don't have to be a lot of pages. Also, as a professor, you should know about Ocas Razor. Ocas Razor is a principle that scholars use to, to consolidate their thoughts into a smaller uh, version for, for people who are non-specialists and just to have a smaller read. We don't need to do all of these pages on something that you can say in two words, which is your method is wrong. And this is why your method is wrong. All right. Also, he admitted to methodological errors. That's why he did it. <laughs> I mean, uh, linguistic errors. That's why he's a linguist. He, he's going to correct you on your errors. All right. So we're about to go down. And privacy give him. I, I, I would like people to see that this is no beef because his critic, although valid, See that? What that mean? We don't his even have to. Is correct. What that mean, brother Apple Stalin? His critic. His critic. Also his critic is is correct. It's accurate. Accurate. Did somebody touch on that? I mean, you know, we need to touch on that, man, because that because because he didn't say his critic was wrong. He said his critic is valid. I don't know where he said this. This again is ego. He called them names that don't count. I don't my I don't care about all of this. Only thing I care about is his critique, although valid. All right, it's valid. Oh, you know I, I've missed that one. Egyptocentric. I mean, that's a euphemism. It sounds better than saying Egyptomaniac. So. Mm -hmm. He said he, he get too centric, but his arguments is method, linguistic methods, though. Weird. But anyway, like I said, it only get these guys, when you correct them in their methods, they get to call you names. That's that's a assume in whole fake method of approach. When you correct that guy, this guy, like he tried to say Sumerian is Bantu. Like when you say, yo, um, can you show me any type of evidence? Yo, can you show me your reconstruction of Sumerian? Your submission, the peer review data that, that proves that Sumerian is a reconstruction, a hypothetical reconstruction. He get to say, you're stupid. You're dumb. You're this. You're that. That's guys who don't know the method. Because if you say, nada, nada, can you show me that Nubian Dogalawi is related to Medunetra? I would say, sure. I can show you. If you say Netsha Net, can you show me Dogon languages are related to Meta Netsha? Yeah, I can show you. I have evidence. Uh, Netsha Net, can you show me Dinka is related to Meta Netsha? Yes, I, I, I can show you. Can you show me Yoruba is related to Meta Netsha? Yes, I, I can show it from peer review data. I didn't do it, but others, uh, other another language did it in, in his peer review. Can you show me Walla? is have some type of linguistic relation with Medinetra. Yes, I can show you potential cognate from Wallop and Medinetra because Dr. Joe got a submission with morphology in a journal. <laughs> I mean, like, it's easy. See how easy it is? All right, so that's continue. I'm going to get off the linguistics. We already know they admitted that his... Uh, but his uh critique is valid. All right, so I don't do the name calling and all the name calls in here is unnecessary. They already agreed that it's valid. He's seen it himself. Apple Stiley saying that the whole the whole community see it. Now let's see cognitive. Why I say cognitive? You cannot use the word cognitive. All right, 
You see this right here? The origin of the word Amin, ancient knowledge, the Bible is never told, that is, the words Amin, Amun, he don't even give definitions. He just says the word. This is not linguistic. They already admitted to not having linguistic knowledge and having a lot of linguistic errors. <coughs> having linguistic errors. And they are themselves not linguists. So Robert then Robert refrain from using cognate. Cognate. That is the words Amen, Amun, Amen, Amen are cognate of the word image. I don't believe that. You have to show us as linguists how you're making that distinction. How? How is Nubian terms cognate with Medunetra? When you say cognate, you're saying that these terms are derived from Egyptian. Medunetra. It's not. A lot of the Nubian terms are actually not derived. They are derived from the proto-ancestor where you're saying that it's cognate. They are derived from the Negro-Egyptian, the proto-Negro-Egyptian ancestor that birthed that concept and idea when you're saying cognate. Then he lumps, like all historians kind of do, with irrespective to borrowings, etc. Yes, you have borrowings that happens between these not really coaches. You have developments in these separate coaches that develop separately from each other, but in but still inside of the now Valley African spectrum. It's still black African, it's just developed in different areas. And it says in ancient Egypt, Kerma, the Potomac, and the Akan, he's lumping. This is called lumping. We don't do lumping. All right. These are basic linguistic mistakes he's probably he's doing. So what are cognate people? Let me share what's a cognate. All right, we're going to look up. I'm going to go to Wikipedia. I don't have to go to Wikipedia, y'all. All right, I'm trying to make it simple for the for the audience to condense it smaller and make it uh, comprehensive for people who are not in my in the in the sub in a subject area of linguistic study. All right, Wikipedia is sometimes good because they do have sources, but I I I rather for you to do Britannica. All right, I rather for people to if you're going to do anything. Don't ever do Wikipedia. Always do Britannica. All right. But you know, Wikipedia is not, it's, it's not so bad. As long as they have sources, all the time do not they do not have sources for, for their work. Now let's see. Uh they might say something, but they don't put a foot, they don't put a source. All right, so as I stated, Wikipedia, I go to Wikipedia as the last option. This is for beginner, 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 beginners. And I know y'all are beginner, beginner, begin. Not everyone, but majority. See, this is a cognate. When you say cognate or cognate, you got to prove some things. But y'all already admitted that Dr. Cambone uh is criticism were valid you already admitted you're not a linguist the linguists that work with y'all committed errors we we got this time we got this information it's not like he's got the came on just came out of blue guy one day and said i'm going to critic got the Faraji's book today just you know all the stuff that guy does dr cambon man he's building all type of institutions in africa Man, he got a lot of things, man. He's he's one of the best. Extra, extraordinary to me. He's the new joke of, of this century. And when you're saying cognate, you're welcome. You're welcome, James Powell. But when you're saying cognate, you see that, brother Afro Styley? Look at all his dimensions to that. You know? 
You can't just say the word cognate. So it says in historical linguistics, cognates are also called lexical cognates. A set of words, you get, we pay attention to detail. Sets, not one word. <laughs> sets, whole sets of words, hundreds and thousands of words in different languages that have been inherited descent from an etymological ancestor in a common parent language. The common parent language is the proto-phase, is the parent language that birthed it. That is a cognate. When was this developed in that paper? Where, where, where is this methodology? Was the cognate established or did you say they were cognate? See, this is why I say that you have to uh, teach, <clears throat> a, get a competent linguist to help you with your studies. I would have helped you a lot because I would have just strictly said it's not a cognate. <laughs> That's all I would have said. And then I would leave that area of study alone. It says, because language change can have very radical effects on both the sound and meaning of a word, meaning when time goes on, words that appear to look like cognates that are similar, they start to look dissimilar. So cognates does not go by lookalikes, resemblance. This word looks like this word, or this word looks like this word. For example, the English word bat, B-A-T, like baseball bat, and then you have an English word bat, a flying bat. Those two words are some type of, can be re represented by homonymic expression. Homonym are words that look the same, and sometimes the case can mean the same, but they are in fact not the same. So you will have bat and bat, but they are derived from two totally different type of proto origins in the Indo-European language family. They look just alike. So this is what we are saying, is that you can't say Amen and Emin are the same because they look alike. <laughs> you have to, even if it's cultural evidence, because borrowing can take place between cultures. Cognate mean blood relative. That's what it means. So if you're using the word cognate as blood relative that is outside of the linguistic scope you have to make that known so you won't get attacked cognates may not be obvious meaning they don't have to look alike they can look totally different uh and often it takes rigorous study of historical sources and the application of the comparative method to establish whether lexemes are cognate or not now let's go back to the paper and see if any type of, you remember it says, often it takes rigorous study of historical sources and uh, the application of the comparative method to establish whether lexemes are cognate or not. That's how we establish whether uh, terms are cognate or, or terms are cognate. Like if you say Ra is a volcano, right? You see this, watch this. You say Ra. That open mouth part is a volcano. Or one may say Ra is a spaceship. It's shaped just like a spaceship, a UAP. So one pseudo over here may say, yeah, no, Ra is a spaceship for a fact. And then you got another pseudo saying, no, Ra is a volcano exploding from the from, from the mouth part on the top. It is a or top of a volcano. They was looking at it with airplanes, they had a V. And they flew over the volcano and knew that it was a circle, a perfect circle on a volcano. So what I would say is, okay, uh, we have to do the etymology of that term. The cognates will teach you the etymology of a term. Because if they are related, they will have different connected uh, semantic categories in each of the cognates to find out whether it was a volcano or to find out whether it is a spaceship. See, so when you're saying cognitive, you have to prove a lot of things. And I, 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 I recommend an introduction course 
even an intermediate course to in like, historical linguistics so you can understand my point that I'm trying to make. So let's go to a historical linguistic textbook peer review data. And I'm going to go to a methodology book that all historical linguists use called Language Classification, History, and Methods. And Methods. All right. The reason why we ain't on Dr. Issus no more because they didn't demonstrate why these things are cognitive. So I can't stay on that, that page. I have to go, you know, to another source. They haven't. They even said everything we needed to know, but not to keep honing in on that. So let's borrow this text. This is by Campbell Lyle, 2008. This is a very excellent text. All right. So in some of the methods we use, I'm going to break down some linguistic, some things in linguistics to show y'all how serious these things are, right? <laughs> uh, you just saying cognitive. No, it's, it's a whole history of, of people you have to study. But anyway, I'm not, I'm, see, this is what I mean. Linguistics, it'll take hours and hours and hours and hours, right? I'm not going to go there. I just want to show something easy for the people to understand. All right. <clears throat> I will get into borrowing, but it's kind of no point right right at this time i would like y'all to see what it means and why we must establish that these terms are cognate because they can be mere lookalikes they're all lookalikes they're all similar or uh, higgle similarities by chance let's look at this All right. The manner in which comparisons are present can encourage the appearance of greater phonetic similarities in putative cognate sets. Remember, putative means in linguistics, we are trained to pay attention to detail. So when we say putative, when we say putative, we're not saying it's apodictic. Like when these are only putative, like, you know, putative doesn't necessarily mean uh, Apple did it. This is super correct. Putative. Though by accident, this happens when forms are compared in a chain where not all are equally similar to one another, but they are ordered visually to suggest greater similarity. When in a potential cognate set, say three forms are compared from three languages. See that? F1 compared to L1. F2, L2. F3, one frequently knows that each neighboring pair in the comparison set is arranged to exhibit the most similarities, but as one goes along the chain, forms at the extremes may bear little or no resemblance. So it's not always where words, just because they look alike, doesn't mean they are kind. You have this is saying that words can be a positive kind, even though they don't look alike, they're not similar. See, a lot of pseudo-linguists fail on that. Non-cognitive. All right. Now, what is a non-cognitive? Often unrelated forms from related languages. See that? Often. Sorry, I, I try to fix this. It says often what are what are non cognates See, we are this is linguistics. I have read all over twenty historical linguistic textbooks. 
often unrelated forms from related languages joined together in the belief see that belief belief that they might be continents are then compared with further with forms from other language families as evidence for even more distant relationship however if the forms are not even continents within their own family any further comparison with forms from languages outside the family is untrustworthy Cases from Olsen's well-known Chapaya Mayan hypothesis illustrate the difficulty. And he is showing you how difficult to be born. Actually, from Proto-Mayan, are ah, there is Proto-Zotelian, Ayan, to live, to be born, is not cognate with Yah. Actually, Yah, pain of the other Mayan languages listed in this set, though its inclusion makes Mayan seem phonetically more like Chapaya, Ayan, to hurt. Yucatec Maya Kautun extended rock is compared to non-cognate Shun rock K in other Mayan language. The true Yucatec cognate will have been Shayan, well, from Proto-Mayan Chayin rock. You see how they are reconstructing. They're saying that these terms are, are cognate. This term Shayan is cognate because it's derived from a Proto-Mayan ancestor. See? That's how you determine cognate. All right, I'm not going to be too complex here. Uh, let's see. All right, enthusiasts. We have to read this because Dr. Faraji and Dr. Issa are enthusiasts of the culture. They're historians. I'm not knocking none of that historical already done work i read dr faraji's work actually it was a great i have a peer review that i was going to share on dr faraji's work on my channel probably you know i was going to do it because he got very excellent reviews he's very excellent dr faraji and dr Issa, in their perspective subjects but linguistics uh you have to be careful of the word cognate so it says Related to the appeal to non-cognitive forms from a language family is the tendency for distant genetic relationship enthusiasts to compare a word from but one language of one family with some word thought to be similar in one or a few languages some other family. <laughs> we call that reaching down. Reaching down. Yes, this exact method, what they have done is actually written in historical textbooks. See? Reaching down. You're reaching. Y'all heard a brother say it. You're reaching, bro. You're reaching. Yeah, I was, I was thinking about that, you know. That's a real uh, nomenclature we use. All right. Real nomenclature. Assad does this a lot. Well, assume. In whole fake, assume he more fake. Uh, assume in whole fake does this. He reaches, he says things like Ra represents the symbol, represents a volcano. Um, I mean, Allah is in the Egyptian text, Allah is in the Egyptian text. The Fulanis are Hebrews, Fulanis he, are Hebrews, like, you Hebrew, know, that's Hebrew, like, literally, Hebrews are like, Egyptians. <laughs> I have him on tape for the record. <laughs> Correct. It's a, a form which has a clearly established etymology in his own family. This is the problem. Amun has his own etymology. By virtue of having conics in a number of sister languages, stands a better chance of perhaps having conic association with words and languages that may be even more remotely related to some isolated form does in some languages has no known kindness elsewhere within his family. So let's not, I, I don't want to, I'm done with that. So that's just to make it quick. All right. We know what non cognizant cognizant is. Uh, I'll be trying. 
yeah, I wanted to show y'all an example. See, this is where it, it gets, when you make these statements, if you can't show no examples and all you're doing is name calling, you're not, a, we know that this profession of linguistics doesn't, you doesn't belong here with us. You belong in a realm of historians, not scientists like linguists. You don't belong in this realm. You're thinking you're going to just look at a word that looks similar. And I'm going to show you why you can't do that. Sorry, y'all. Let's look up Hawaiian. I know he gave good Hawaiian. How do you spell Hawaiian? Uh, H-A-W-A-I. Uh-huh. Like A-N. Let's see. Uh, say it again, brother. So H-A-W-A-I mm-hmm. and then A-N. I'm going to double check. So H-A-W-A. Oh, maybe there's two I's actually. Yeah. Uh, Hawaiian. There's two I's. So H-A-W-A-I-I-A-N. Excuse me. Excuse me. Got a little had a little chest cold. Oh no worry. It's all good. Mm. All right, I'll find it. Um I want to be searching through here too long, like that that don't look good on a thing. Let me see. Uh, oh, take your time. Um, no rush. I just want to show how words can just look alike, resemble. Mm-hmm. each other it doesn't mean that that's why dr Campbell is only saying yo you know i i will support you it just your ideas is probably good your narrative but you, your method you have to show us why they are cognitive etc And I read this book a million times. It seems like the book is different when you read it on computer than if it's real life for some reason. Mm-hmm. All right. Presume cognates. Right, let's see. It's the example. Cognate case markers. Oh, I know they okay. These are different methods. All right, so lexical comparisons. Y'all should take this book just to read about this section here, how to show languages are related. All right, this is a very important section, and it shows you how languages are related. How to do that particular method is a method that we have to do not going to get into all of it, but we do lexical comparisons. But the formula of lexical comparisons is what? Basic vocabulary, because if we're looking at a cultural aspect of language, languages are broken down in two types of word lists, words. You have cultural words and basic words. Why do we don't use cultural words? We don't use cultural words because cultural words are easily borrowed. When two cultures come together, they go through what we call aerial diffusion. Aerial diffusion consists of different types of reasons why other cultures will borrow warfare, force, slavery, adopting others' religion, trade. There are numerous factors to aerial diffusion of why two cultures will come together and they will have similar items, similar gods and deities. But to prove they are related is one, uh, uh, they are cognate. As I show y'all, cognate is very complex and it's difficult to establish cognates between these languages using this method, these methods. So we use basic vocabulary because basic vocabulary with a barbability scale, we have what we call barbability scales. What, what, what spectrum of words can be borrowed faster, quicker, and easier than others? We know that basic vocabulary is very difficult it also be borrowed. Basic vocabulary is borrowed, but not at the frequency, at a low frequency, not at a frequency as uh, cultural vocabulary. When you go to cultural vocabulary, that is borrowed at a very high frequency than the borrowability scale for basic vocabulary items. Basic vocabulary items are like 
the mouth, eyeballs, even though they can be viral, but only in very low frequency. See, so this is how we discern what is a cognate from what is a lookalike because we deal with the basic vocabulary, as this method is saying. Oh, there's another method called global chronology, which is used for dating and things of that. Multilateral comparisons for probing to see the degree of relationship between languages. This is not the tool to genetically relate languages, but we use it to probe to see if these languages possibly can be the related or the degree of relationship in general. And then you will have had to break down the different sound correspondences. All right. This is the method Dr. Joke used sound correspondence, systematic. And when we go to Dr. Jope's wall off work, we can get an example, a, a exact example of this and Obenga's, uh, Dr. Obenga's Yoruba and Medunetra work that he got submitted to our online journal, a peer review journal, where he shows a systematic corresponding elements with phonology. And then you have uh, Jope showing it with morphology with wall off. So this is the method on how we determine what a cognate is, is by sound correspondences. See? Sound correspondences. All right. It's a lot to read. I don't want to go through every last example, but I do want to show y'all something of uh, similarities. And I think I'm getting closer. I think I'm getting closer. I think I'm getting closer. Sorry, y'all. I ain't read this. It's an 08 text. I read this at my very beginning. This is like a very Don't worry. It's all good. Beginning type of see borrowing. All right. So you have borrowing. These are the type of things that will inspire lookalikes. Chance similarities. All right. Let's read about chance similarities. That's important to read about. All right, let's read some chance similarities. Chance accident mentioned several times already is another possible explanation for similarities in comparing languages. Remember, there are numerous linguistic explanations to why words are similar. They can be loans, borrowings, Chance lookalikes or onopotamia. I always have a problem pronouncing that word, which is like, for example, you call a dog rough, rough, or or you say a cat say meow or purr, and you'll have those same sounds evaluated by other human beings in their own families of languages because they make those same sounds everywhere. So that sound will be seen similar everywhere. That don't mean it came from Africa. It means that they heard the same sound too and, and, and reported it in their language on uh, Lexus database. But then it says chance accident mentioned several times already is another possible explanation for similarities in compared languages. And it's avoidance and questions of deep family relationships is crucial. Any claim that a similarity between two human languages is significant must be supported by a demonstration that it could not be the result of sheer chance. This is range 1999, page 2000, I mean, page 213. Y'all see that? So is it wrong for Obadette Cambon to say what he said? No, even the author said that he is valid. Um, I say he is valid. He's in the right for doing that. I think we should start listening to our young powerful brothers like Obadeli, Dr. Obadeli Cam, Okanini Cambon. We need to be listening to uh, sisters like Dr. Riketi Amin, Baba Riketi, I mean, uh, Riketi Amin, uh, Dr. Mario Beatty, experts, Dr. Theophile Binger, who's still living and in, in doing great works in Africa, as well as Dr. Obadeli Cambon. Uh, Brother April Stiley, I always big up him because he sent y'all to the experts. Notice, I don't deal with people who are looking for cult-like followers. I'm, I'm interested in people who are trying to 
build Job's legacy. He's the pioneer of this. So thus far, as Greenberg is the pioneer for American as linguistic, then Job is the pioneer for our Negro Egyptian linguistic. It's only fair, right? And we can do that. And it says, any claim that a similarity between two human languages, merotic, one, they are saying that merotic, similar is the, the merotic amen is cognate with Egyptian imen. That's what they say. I don't have a problem with that. Actually, that's, I would love that. I, yo, listen, if I don't, I love that people think that Sumerian is bad to you, man. I, yo, really do. I don't think that's crazy. I, I, I love it, but let me tell you, Bantu is a linguist. Bantu is a reconstruction. I just want y'all to, you know, know that, like Bantu is a reconstruction. All right, it's a reconstruction. But Proto Bantu not only is a reconstruction, right? But when you say it's a Bantu, I have a problem with that because that's a Europeanized class language classification that was reconstructed. That, that's what that is. <laughs> I mean, to be truthful. So how can a Sumerian language be a Bantu language when the Bantu, the pro, proto-Bantu is not, is a reconstruction? How, uh, now, if you're saying that, okay, it is in the Bantu branch, now you, you dig yourself reaching down a bigger hole because now you have to reconstruct Sumerian, then you got to compare it with all of the Bantu languages to prove that it is derived from its common ancestor, a bad, a proto-Bantu common ancestor. Demonstration. We here assume Imhofake used that out of context of demonstration. That's not, you don't just demonstrate on YouTube. It says it here. Any claim that a similarity between two human languages is significant, it must be supported by a demonstration that by a demonstration that it could not be the result of sheer chance so let's go back to their paper and see if that demonstration was done you know it's funny earlier you mentioned the cat and the sound you know meow and uh, you might know that word but uh, in medu nature the word for cat is actually meow which is very similar to our meow when it comes to the sound or onomatope, like we say. A cool papa, mama, around the world, many people would say mama for mother. Could it be an example of that? Yes, you're correct. You're correct. Um, that's why I say what you're saying is absolutely correct. If you can pronounce that for me, that word again. I always have a problem pronouncing that word. Omnipotopia. Uh, onomatope. Uh, I'm not sure. I want to see if you pronounce it, um, if you spell the same in, in English. But in French, we pronounce it uh, onomatope. Onomatope. Mm -hmm. And uh, onomatope. That's a linguistic term. Oh, okay. So in English, you call it uh, on, onomatope. Well, I'm not sure how you pronounce it exactly. Oh, this is uh, the sound. Onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia, right. yes. Onomatopoeia, as you're explaining, causes words to look alike in different languages that are not related. And people are thinking that these things are cognate. When, you're, when you say cognate, man, you're saying that these are derived from the same proto-ancestor. Yo, you got a lot of work to do, especially if you're saying muriotic. Muriotic is not well, muriotic has issues and not well studied. Muriotic. Muriotic is need new studies and field research and things of that nature to it. That's not apodictic yet. Muriotic languages and stuff like that. They didn't fully translate Muriotic yet to even compare it. So you got to, you know, put in more work with Muriotic itself before we begin to say what is cognate and what is not cognate. And what phase of Muriotic? They're different phases. So Yo, know, it's, 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 you know, that's why they got in trouble with it. Because as you stated, English, we say, look, we say mama in, in Baltimore or ma. And I bet you in French language, well, I bet you in any African language, they might say the same thing. Ma, pa, because when a baby, Google and goggling, mama, 
my mom, my, 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 they make these sounds with forms on a, that word. It did it. It seems to be similar, but these are its own developed sound coming from the sounds of animals. So you hear purr, you hear meow, you hear you hear that because that's what the cat makes. And you say in Medunetra, meow, but then you look into an Indo-European language, which is not related scientifically to, to the Medunetra languages, and you'll see the same similarities. That doesn't mean they are cognate. This is what Dr. Campbell is saying, chance similarities. This is what this is saying, that if you're saying these terms are MN and MN is in all of this is, is cognate, then where is your demonstration? You got to have a linguistic demonstration to prove with cognate sets, not one cognate, but a whole set of sound correspondences with hundreds of words, thousands even. So, man, it's a lot of research you have to do. I think that they should have said that it needed further discussion. And if future linguists in the future can prove that that would be good for for our study and and that would have been in a that that would have been the end of the argument so right here we need demonstration uh to prove that your results are not by not the demonstration that assume in whole fake teaches he teaches a a pseudo demonstration he teaches that okay proto bantu sumerian is bantu then he go on youtube and show all of these pseudo demonstrations that's not a demonstration. And then he don't show you the entirety scope of Sumerian and don't even reconstruct it. Because Sumerian is what people are did, what? Language. And it's an isolate. Yep. It, like I said, he, you know, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work you got to do. It's a dead language. I mean, yes, it's an isolate, brother, but we don't even got to get to that isolate you know he got the he got to make it comparable to even compare it you know an isolate we know it's an isolate but how are you going to prove that it's not an isolate you have to compare it how do you compare it it's a dead language so what do you have to do with that dead language you compare it with living language that's my point it's a lot we have to do it take years man 10 for 20 years on one paper in linguistics Linguistics is serious. So I said, you know, do it. You know, are you aware? Um, I, I always forget his name. Every time I'm trying to say his name, for a strange reason, I've been saying Charles Finch, but I don't think it's Charles Finch. Um, he claims that he deciphered the Mayoville script. He's a, he's a brother from America. Uh, he's a mature brother. He's a, he's a bit of an elder. He's a, he's an elder. Dr. Scott for... Winters? Yes. No, he's no way. And I've been telling people, you know, has that been established, you know, <laughs> that he deciphered the Meroritic script? No way. You know. uh, Claude Winters, Dr. Claude Winters is a pseudo man. You know, he's a master pseudo linguist. I say he's a master at pseudo linguistics, but he does no more than in assume in whole faith. He does no more than assume in whole faith. I swear to you. But his comparisons are just as pseudo is and lazy. These guys are lazy. They want narratives instead of the demonstration scientific. That's where the problem is coming in is that we have beautiful narratives. Like I said, Sumerian, saying Sumerian is Bantu is beautiful. It's, it brings people in. It's a, it's a narrative. But the demonstration of proving that these is a genetically related language to African language has not been demonstrated in any peer review system in the world. Probably on YouTube, but that don't count. <laughs> YouTube don't count. But Dr. Claude Winters is a pseudo linguist, but he knows more linguistics than a assume Imhofake. But yes, he's a pseudo linguist. He did not decipher anything. <laughs> and he's, I don't know if he was, you know, smoking good weed or. I'm not sure, man. Some of these guys may got some good marijuana where they at. They sometimes may be drunk or something like that. And just want to, you know, I be feel like doing it, you know, because I be wanting attention, you know, like every other human. You might hear me say, I'll fool you, though. I have a title, Alien Technology. You be thinking I'm about to get into some pseudo stuff 
and I'll give you, I'll bring you right to a peer review. So people ain't tricked by me no more. But these guys, they say things like Raz a volcano, and they stick with it. And you know, I only can do but laugh. You know what I mean? Raz a volcano. I laugh. You know, it's funny. Samarian is bad too in black. You know, I'll be laughing. You know, it's funny to me. It's entertaining. I kind of like it, but when, when when you're scientifically speaking, you know, like the brother Afro Style, he's saying, no way, man. He, you ain't decipher. No. If you decipher, think about it, brother. If a guy proved that, okay, Afro Style. People would have spoken about it, you know. We would have, you know, documentaries, you know, articles, books about you it. You don't get an award. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, brother, if you prove that Sumerian is a Bantu language, your name will be in history. It's, in, it's no way. You deciphered Mariotti <laughs> fully? And they can't do it with all the money they have and you are in a basement of your mama house. And you know what I'm saying? You decipher Mariotti and these guys with tools, they got millions of dollars funding their research. They, they, they want to know what they got the best linguists in America, what they do, the Americanist type of linguists, and they couldn't do it. And you did it with no sources or nothing. It's these stories, man, that storyline of, you know, the Anunnaki. You know, the Anunnaki sounds slick. You know, that's what attracted me when I was a kid in this stuff. You know? Mm -hmm. Aliens, wow, you know, wow, aliens, yo, <laughs> alien black, and they black. They aliens from a, a uh, risk <laughs> another galaxy. Nibiru. <laughs> and they look like me came here and build. <laughs> you know, we it's narratives. Never no demonstration though. It's never in peer review. Never. It's like, you know. So uh, I think the people are getting mad at the black community. Like that, that girl said, who was on your on here the other day that, you know, she go to a lot of platforms, we beef and we pose the beef with each other. There's nothing wrong with that. It's nothing wrong with that. Okay. People are always saying, Okay, you'll find we are beefing. This is how the universe evolution is like that. It's called survival of the fittest. Uh, this is not just in survival of the fittest, is not just in evol human evolution, physical evolution, it's in all things. So pseudoisms is dying out. That's why it's a fight. It's a fight because pseudoisms among Africans, black Africans, are starting to be on a decline. So mm. anything, any idea that is an entity in itself, a idea from human beings, it will go through a phase where it's equal, and then it will be once one start dying out, they will fight back. This is in all, in everything we do in evolution. So what's happening is on all these platforms, why you're finding black arguing and beefing? That's what happened when, uh. The guy uh, Galileo, he caused the uproar in European culture. See, this is people don't understand history of of academia. Galileo looked at the galaxy, and he was trying to comprehend it with with science, mathematical science and methodology. But the church was running everything, so that went against the church. They started beefing and killed him. They took his life. What we doing is nothing compared to. If you was back then in the time of Galileo, you will get killed for saying now, science. Now, brothers and sisters, if you don't know, Galileo is a, a, a well, an astronomer, I guess, but he's the one who stated that the Earth was not flat as the Catholic Church believed, but that it was uh, round or roundish. So he was put like in prison or some sort of house arrest, and at the end. Uh, I'm not sure about the specifics, but you know he he suffered a great deal because of his stance. And, and they murdered him. Yeah, and and like I don't know if it's like 150 years later, but many many years later, the church finally admitted yes, actually the Earth is uh, is round. And some while back we had some flat Earthers, you know. And I think there's a rapper. I don't want to say his name because it might be the the the, the right 
name, but one quite famous flapper actually stated that he's a flat earther, that, that he believes that the earth is flat. Well, and, right. and and we, we have some, I saw a video not long ago, of some some guy who was, who was like, okay, I'm going to give a proof that the earth is flat. I'm going <laughs> to take a picture and use that stuff. And then the picture should be like that. But eventually, you know, live, you know, he just realized that, you know, it's just a fail. And back in like 2008 slash 2009, I remember amongst the black conscious community, <laughs> we had all those people who used to talk about astral projection, man. <laughs> right. And it was like the one of the flyest thing ever. And back then, like 2009, 2010, people were like, yeah, in 2012, there will be a great shift because the planets will align. I, I mean, the, the pseudoism was just crazy. And, you know, I mean, I don't want to throw no shots, but we have two well-known brothers, you know what I'm saying? You know, uh, one's name starts with a P, one other name starts with a B. And those two guys, they're very, very deep and thorough with the metaphysics. And they were like, you know, they were like the king of the, 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 the conscious community, you know? Right. Yeah. And uh and I mean, you know the king of it. Oh yeah, yeah. You're right. Um she she was saying that on your show, which I disagree, that there's a lot of it posed to be like that because this is science. Now what's happening is the shift of being pseudo is starting to decline. They are fighting for that position. That's why you're seeing every platform we have combat pseudoisms, silly stuff. And we're now people are forcing people to be peer reviewed, which is going to cost a lot more money declining from the pseudoism. And it's going to be a shift. And this is a good shift. I think these uh, debates, these arguments will happen into the weakest party loses, which of course is going to be pseudoism. They are going to lose amongst the black community because they have no scientific evidence. So this is why you have it. It happened in all, and don't just try to blame and be biased as if only blacks did it. We're <laughs> we 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 are doing it the same way. At least we are not murdering hmm. each other for at least we can come and argue. Europeans at one time. If a female, a white woman come up with medicine to help them, they say she witchcraft. And they burn her at the stake. And kill her. So don't, don't, you know, people want to wanna pick and choose when it comes to blacks, even our own, like as if we are animals or something savage. When this happens in all cultures, when a shift starts to happen with science, scientific breakthroughs and innovation, it changes communities. We, our people came out of religion. We came out of a very difficult thing in the transatlantic slave slave trade that we went through. Not to mention the transatlantic, but before the transatlantic, we was enslaved but with, with the Arabs and each other. We was uh, Islamic, Islamized Negroes forcing it on our own people and killing our own. So we went through a trauma with our own kind for adopting alien religions. And then from alien religions, we get captured and put into a whole nother system of, of slavery from our own people to the European systems. Now we are shipped to Barbados. We are shipped to Portugal. We are shipped everywhere separate. We went through something horrible. And to get out of that in that short of time, I will say we are strong and ingenious to even do that from the, to even come out of our situation and to get to this level where we now can openly debate pseudoisms and things of that nature is so excellent for me. We should be proud of the black community, even the pseudos that's even trying to study science to prove that to prove their view. I don't mind astral projection. See, <laughs> I know a brother came out here, out here. He said, Ned and Ned, yo, you know it's 222. 22 a portal hole this week i swear he said that he said a portal hole is opening in a shift is happening so i said shift okay mm -hmm. um i said I, I don't i don't i'm not knocking your idea brother i'm just saying have you ever thought about trying to prove this in physics you so because it's a i mean okay they thought galileo was pseudo but it found out he wasn't 
So when I'm saying I'm not knocking that two every time is is the numbers are are the same, <laughs> the number is the same on on the dates or whatever. But you got to prove that is a portal hole that opens up in the atmosphere. And why does it open up when when it's all the numbers are two 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 two, but it doesn't open up when the numbers are not that. You have to scientifically prove that. So we are in a stage where uh, of the black community where we are challenging ourselves, we are challenging those, and it's an honor to be amongst this. And you know, you know, brother, this is just another example, and that's just me, it's just an example coming from me. Uh, it's not Ned and Neb statement. Uh, we had um, Elijah Muhammad. Who talked about the mother plane or mother wheel with a lot of baby bombers inside that can drop some bombs that will drill like you know maybe a half a mile or a quarter of a mile into down the earth and there will be the destruction of the european civilization now we have uh, uh, i mean we there is a high science there's a, a international space station they send satellites they send uh, you know, um, a lot of uh, uh, um, uh, devices in space. And it's funny, we never had any reports of, oh, by the way, we have a very large uh, uh, UFO uh, or we have a very large mother wheel, mother plane, and we have determined that there are, there are plenty of uh, uh, other planes or, or flying objects, flying saucers inside, you know. But we have a group of people who are members of the NOI and they believe that to the T because their leader said so. But with all the science and we don't have just America that sends devices in space, we have the Russians, probably the Chinese people, but uh, that has never been mentioned. So I'm mean, like, is it a worldwide conspiracy to hide the existence of this mother plane? You have to wonder. So um... belief. Well, Belief there is versus science. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna tell you. You see how pseudo information is very in the t you see how pseudo information draws you, but that's kind of what Elijah Muhammad said to me was pseudo information, but it has some truth to it. That's because someone is kicking pseudo information. That means he don't have some type of science truth to what he's saying. What we're saying as a scientist that you have to have. Uh, false ability. It, your, your knowledge, your knowledge has to be falsifiable to be either true, proven true, or false. Either way, it's fine for a scientist. But Elijah Muhammad, uh, I read Elijah Muhammad, uh, the mother plane and things of that nature. I, I read that. Um, it's pseudo, of course, but there is some truth in it because there is scientific evidence of UFOs. Uh, today, are called UAPs. They are signed. Yo, I'm saying if you got the guy from Kadika, the peer review science channel saying that, uh, it, it has to be it's peer reviews on it. Uh, the Navy ships uh seeing it, they got yo eyewitnesses, they got uh radars that, that the ships got, they got these things on it. They said one you, of the you mean the, that, the, the the half of my mother wheel, like a half of my uh uh object? They said that. They have one where it's gigantic in other in other uh little ships was coming out of it. All right. Well, please, you know, whenever you have time, please, you know, share me some some links so I can look into that. Then the midst the ship, the ship, uh what they said, the ship, the Nimitz, they said that it was a lot of them, not one. And they are trans, they can go in the water up top. So I don't know what they're doing. It, it may be military experiments. You know what I'm saying? It may be some new technology that is being developed by the government that they don't want nobody to know. They could be lying about. I'm not sure what's going on, but uh there is peer reviews on UAPs, uh evidence. And I'm not saying that they are aliens. I'm saying that they are UAPs. You know, that's the scientific term, meaning unidentified. When you say UFO or UAPs, that's not necessarily indicating an extraterrestrial entity. Like, yes. So, you know, until we see it for proof. Other than that, 
I'm labeling it as pseudo until proof. That's what I do. You know, pseudo I'm not, until proven factual. Yeah. Like this situation, I'm in is cognate with Emmett. It's pseudo until you prove your case. If you can't, you know, it's pseudo. And no, not at an African studies journal. No, you got to prove this in a linguistic journal because you're using lingu linguistic nomenclature. To be fair. All right. Oh, uh, let's see. Sorry, I, I've been trying to find this list. Sometimes I confuse books. It seems like American is linguistic text. All of they look just alike. Every last one of them. <laughs> but he did a listing of Hawaiian. It was a list. I'm going to turn this off because I want to keep flipping through and let you build. But that's it. You know, I don't have nothing negative to say about Professor Issa. You know, I'm unbiased, brother. You know that. Um, you know, I tell the truth and I try to be honorable, even about myself. Um, I started out pseudo, man. I started out pseudo <laughs> like everybody else. And I'll beat you up. I'll say, yo, let's go to the boxing ring and we can fight it out. And whoever wins. <laughs> That's He's not right. How you win a, that's not how you win an argument, but you know, no, you don't think that they get mad yeah. when you because I was once a pseudo man. I want I was raised in a church all my life. Holla. I was way I was raised in a church all my life. So my mother raised me from since I was born in a church. That's you can't get no pseudo than a church, and then uh I just had questions. Uh, to the pastor, the pastor put me up to church. So when the pastor put me up to church, my mother, you know, and them, they didn't like me no more, I guess, and kicked me out the, the house, the family. I, I went against the church. So she's saying, I'm the devil. I, my mother <laughs> taught me all types of devils and both of us pseudo, right? But I had questions. I had questions about Jesus. And uh, I said, I'm not worshiping nobody. I can't, that, that's not helping me with my bills. That's when I asked for a pair of tennis shoes, I got holes in my shoes, and everybody got new shoes when they go to school. And I got holes. When I ask Jesus, I don't get nothing. Mm -hmm. But when I go out here and I take it and I get it, that's the only way I have anything. So that was my issue with the Jesus thing is that when it's time for, for me and my family to make out, he never there. Mm -hmm. We always did, struggling. Did you, so did you manage to reconcile with your mother? Later on, uh, not really. My mother still, um, don't like. I ain't gonna say don't. I love my mother. I ain't even gonna say nothing negative. Yeah, but of she don't support me, um, in no possible but, manner, man. So, mm. but you know, you know what you've mentioned about you, um, having holes in your shoes while the others have nice shoes, and you prayed and you still had the holes in your shoes it reminds me of the movie uh mutabaruka plays in the movie and then the sister who used to the black sister well the, the sister who was in star trek she just recently passed and she played in that movie um yeah. it's just that the title of the movie uh escapes me now but it's just a movie about slavery um and uh uh, I, will, I will look for the title as I speak. In the movie, there's a we see some scene when she's getting getting um, uh, raped repeatedly by one of uh, her slave master, and she says there's a voice over, and she says, you know, I've been praying, I've been praying, but you know, I still go through the same thing, so I stopped that altogether, you know. Right. But you know, um, I wanted to ask you, hold on, black actress, Star Trek. So yes, Michelle Nichols. So um, if I put Michelle Nichols, which is a slavery movie, and then the title will come. Uh, uh, well, I have to look for her, her, her filmogra filmography. But in the meantime, I wanted to ask you, I just made a, you mentioned at one point the University of Leiden. Leiden. Is this the one in the Netherlands? 
Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, share it. Okay. I would love for you to uh, get get linguistic because I would like to do some work with you because you already have a natural feel for languages and and um, you can take being corrected and that and that's that's what will make you a good linguist. Well, you know, um, uh, it's I'm only fifty dollars, do though, bro. Yeah. Well, actually, I have a surprise coming up. You know, I, I like to do things. And then say, okay, it's what I do. Because okay, so many yeah. of us say, so many of us say, um, I'm gonna do this. I mean, I know some people 10 years ago they say I'm gonna learn the meta nature, 10 years later they haven't learned it, and you know, they say I'm gonna, you know, either it's like personal stuff, like you know, I'm gonna get in shape, or I'm gonna do that sport, or I'm gonna start that business, I'm gonna read that book. I know some people told me they're gonna read a book, and for, <laughs> for 10 years they, they say, Oh, I'm gonna read the book. And ten years, ten years later, didn't read it. So I'm, um, <laughs> but um, but I, I was actually, I, I always love languages. Actually, you know, I've, I've, You're uh, good at it. you know, I've, I've started learning uh, uh, Kiswahili. That was the first African language that, that I've learned. You know Kiswahili. Uh, uh, you know Kiswahili. Uh, kidogo, kidogo, kidogo. Oh, mimi kupenda Kiswahili. So I, I know a little bit and. Um, uh you know I've, I've you know studied the arabic a little bit you know recently I, i've been i moved to the greek and and the hebrew as well uh but unfortunately you know instead of you know being able to concentrate on those languages you know i don't really get support and i have some people who do team efforts so i have to you know address it but you know and of course the meta nature i've been giving lessons for a while but yeah. you know honestly and it shouldn't be a, a reason or motive or an excuse but the activities of some pseudo linguist has discouraged me from getting <laughs> to the linguist. I'm telling you because I considered the linguistic field, and I don't want people to feel like, well, he wanted to go so bad against so and so that he went and studied linguistics. But you know, like I said, I have a I have a little surprise coming up. You know what I'm saying? So well, I'm just know. doing it, man. You know, that's on you. I was just educating the people. Of, I support you. So uh, this is only. You see this course, uh, Miracles of Human Language, um, and Introduction to Linguistics. And this is the professor, Mark Van Oostendorp. And this is this course is offered by the University of Leiden. Yes, a top university who is ranked. The university is ranked. And these are the subjects you learn in it, in your st the study of sound, phonology, and phonetics. You'll know what I be meaning about sound and this got to be reconstructed and all of that. And the sound systems and et cetera. The study of words and synthesis morphology, which is the bones of a language. So phonology is good, but morphology makes your case even stronger. Some linguists only use morphological evidence for language relationship. The study of meaning, pragmatics, and semantics. That'll be important. Language in the brain. So what people don't know about historical linguists is that we learn actually learn the brain. We actually learn where languages uh, are derived from, from the brain. So you have the broker area of your brain. It's certain positions of your brain where language uh, functions. See? So it's part of your brain. You have language in society. So all of these modules, this got a 4.7 rating. Which is very excellent, 79.38% uh, in the level is a beginner's level. See that? This is a beginner's level, 23 hours to complete. You'll be competent at least in basics before we begin. I'm saying it so before we even begin to start to make linguistic arguments, this can strengthen, that can strengthen your case. On, we need all of the reason why I'm saying for you to get in linguistics because we need black linguists. It's like a shortage. Yes, yes, and and and, and I and I agree with you. You know, uh, but um, uh, eventually, maybe you know, I will consider uh, linguistics. You know, somehow, some way. But but like I said, right you know, here, and right here. That, that, that's it's already giving a hint. Free. But it's but only fifty dollars. But I have a surprise, you know, coming up. You know, I, I told some some of the people who take the meta class. I told them what it is, 
and um, I, I, I wait till you know I'll wait for a little while before I let like the, the larger community knows you know uh, the larger community know. Uh, for the record, I just want to say uh, the movie is called Sankofa, but uh, actually that actress Michelle Nicole apparently she's not the one who plays in it, so uh, I made a mistake. Uh, but the Sankofa with Mutabaru, Mutabaruka, that's the movie, the scene that I talked about. But I wanted to ask you, so you, you've, uh, yes, it was laden. Now, just for the people, UMass, what does that stand for? University of Massachusetts. University of Massachusetts. That's a top school. Okay. All right. And um, well, by the way, uh, I went to Leiden's museum. Uh, very, very nice uh, Egyptian museum, you know, just yeah. like uh, Turin's museum in, in Italy. Very impressive, you know, because those museums are just for Egypt, even though Leiden, they have a part uh, at the top where it's like the uh, uh, the history of Netherlands slash Europe. Uh, these these areas, this region, but uh, it is mainly uh, ancient Egypt and Torino or Turin in Italy is just for uh, ancient Egypt. And uh, so very, very, very nice. However, in Turin, uh, we're not allowed to film. We can only take picture, pictures. But in, um, uh, my bad, in Leiden, we're not allowed to film. We can only take pictures. But in Turin, we can uh, film. Now, uh, you said that also before regarding Vikeri Amen. You did state that she, was a, she had a master's degree in linguistics. But you said that she had a, a master in Egyptology. But Many people say that she has a, a PhD in no. Egyptology. Okay. She oh. was, with, people confuse this. Uh, again, a lot of her students, you know, she is a great teacher of it. A lot of her students are pseudo, you know, so like a lot of students in college is pseudo. You ever, you ever talk to a dude in college that believe in, and, yo, I remember I went to Anne Arundel Community College. And I was taking a fiber optic technology. Guess what my teacher said at the college? She said that they got their technology from the UFO crash in Roswell. She told me that. That I was like, in Baltimore, somebody lying with you like this. Mm. Right? So I'm like, so at the class, I said, so you trying to say that this fiber optic is alien, extraterrestrial. And she believed that. So, you know, in college, man, I ran across a lot of pseudo. That's where the Dr. York, a lot of the Dr. York stuff was floating around in college too, man. You you, you best believe that, no joke, man. You had people, you had people in Nation of Islam in college, fraternities. A lot of pseudo stuff are, are going on in college. But Dr. Riketti Amin, with the pseudo, her students that are, in fact, uh pseudos or whatever they never been to no university and they don't know the ropes of it the ropes of it is that you become an undergrad you're an undergraduate on an undergraduate level she she has a uh master's and then you go into after you get your master's you get into the phd program so program, she runs yes. in the phd program mm -hmm. but she does have a master's in Egyptology, Egyptology and, and linguistics. linguistics. All right. Now, you know, um, there's one thing that um, uh, Dr. Jahi Sa, Dr. Salim Faraji, and uh, Professor Osei, uh, well, probably one of, I mean, in the response, in the response, they state that they have sent their paper to Dr. Obadeli Kambo, but that Dr. Campbell did not reply to them. So they're trying to use that as if, you know, he could have replied to us. But what would you respond to that? Because no, you can't respond. He will not respond to it. Why would you? Mm. But but uh, maybe I, I did not make myself clear. I'm not talking about their response to the critique. I'm talking about their, their pamphlet or book. Uh, <laughs> before they published it, they said that they sent... I don't know if I should say the draft, but that they've sent the paper to Obadeli Kambo for reviews or comments. I don't, remember, I don't remember which word they use, but basically that they've sent the word before it was published. And so some somewhere in the critique, they, they, they've kind of saying, and I'm paraphrasing, you know, he he could have told us this because we already sent the, he don't have, the word. He don't have to do that. Hmm. What rules? He don't have to do that. Hmm. What rule saying that he have to do that? That's a peer reviewer. They're asking mm -hmm. him as a 
peer review. And some guys, when you when you do deal with them, they get mad when you correct them. They be wrong as all outdoors. And yo, can you review this? I had a brother on academia do me like that. This guy had all type of wrong stuff in his text on say he, I'm writing something on Kimmit. Everybody asked me to peer review that work on Kimmit. And mm -hmm. I, I man, I have emails from academia. And then when I go there, I look at how it's written. They thinking I'm 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 talking about their argument. I don't care about your argument. I only care about if your argument get accepted in a in a in a journal. That's the only thing I care about. I don't care about your damn argument. That's stealing. If I care about your argument, then I'm I shouldn't care about your argument. You're sending me the paper so I can get your structure together. Are you do using in-text citations? Are you using sources? Do you have a bibliography? Are you, do you do you use and write correct punctuation marks? Are you are, are you are, are you indenting correctly? Is your margin correct? So that's what I'm looking at first before I can even get into your your uh, premise. Premise. You gotta pass that. At least have an in-text citation. Tell at least have something to tell me what Egyptian are you talking about? There are different types of Egyptian. There are different phases of Egyptian. The, People are just thinking this is one Egyptian, and no, it's phases. These phases affects the language, the grammar, the morphology of the language. Borrowings, certain phases are have more borrowings than other phases. Th that have to be made clear. So you know, uh, a lot of these guys, they just don't want. They lazy and want to do a quick fix book for YouTube to get a little two thousand dollars so they can spend on weed money. But I'm just I'm just telling people like this is that that don't work no more. You got to get your work peer reviewed. That's how that this is the standings that you have to do to change these standings. You have to do that process to change anything to to prove that bad to a Sumerian. You have to submit your work in a Sumerian journal and prove that they are wrong to prove that you are correct. You got to do it correctly scientifically. You can't just be making these come by lately books and put it on Kindle because you can. It won't fly with me. So when guys ask me to peer review that data, the first thing I'm looking at, are your margins correct? Are you indenting? Is your periods for, did you do a spell check on your work? Not only a spell check, do you did, have you written an abstract? Do you have a summary, an abstract for your text? Do you have numbers? You got guys that don't even... Yo, you got guys that make a table of contents in that text. Don't even put numbers. Hmm. So you look through the book, you're lost. You don't even know which section you gotta. You trying to find a section? You, dude, don't even got numbers in this book. These guys hmm. don't know how to write, and hmm. and even if they submit that data to a journal, it will get rejected. When you send it to a journal, you gotta pass the editor's review hmm. before you even get to the first round. Mm -hmm. The editor's review in a journal, you got to pass, is it written correctly? Did you do what the journal says? The journal said they want a 1.2 margin. Did you do that? The journal said they want this. This is what I'm, and then when I look at these guys' stuff, they get angry and say, net and net and stop, net, don't know this. And don't, I have experience mm -hmm. with these journals. Science and, journals. and you know, when people ask you to make those reviews, those emails that you receive, um they don't pay you for that they don't compensate you for that right no so a professor in linguistics like dr obadi de combo probably receives many review requests yeah and it's not most yeah. reviewers don't get paid uh beyond mm. even the professionals they do it that's why you should honor a reviewer they mm. don't get paid for this most majority mm. Some do, some do, but depending mm -hmm. if it's private, like you know, like Smithsonian or something. I'm not sure how private companies run their uh, journal systems, but uh, most collegiate academic journals, they're not getting paid, man. They're coming out there, their hard work in life to review your data to, to mm -hmm. let you know it's correct. A, so it's a, a lot. It's a lot of time. Yeah, a peer review is someone who helps you to get mm -hmm. past the editor's review. Mm -hmm. So the brother, it was it, it, it be a, it's a brother who disrespected me, man. And I was trying to tell him, yo, your whole the way you're writing is just horrible. 
like who you writing you got to be writing for kindle or you you got to be writing some personal book that you about to do a saw him assume him whole fake and blast it out there and use your mouth to promote that's not how you promote science you promote science by doing the, the correct standard for for the scientific approach for new innovative research hmm, i get it well thank you very much thank you very much um brothers and sisters i have shared the the brothers uh cha youtube channel account account kedika k-e-d-i-k-a peer review uh scientific channel or science channel well uh, well the kedika kedika peer review if you put kedika peer review it will show up you know and um in the description of this video you have the brother Nejaneb's bio a short bio and at the end you have the link to his presentation at the University of Abome in uh, the Republic of uh, Benin, Benin. And um, you have the link to the presentation, which is hosted on his YouTube channel. So the brother has a cash app here. You can see it, uh, but just on the screen here, it's that a sign CW1021. Uh, I don't know if you have to put it in uh, uppercase, but here it is in uppercase. And uh, there it is. Jeremiah, Jeremiah wrote the, this is the name of the name's YouTube account, Kedika, the peer review science channel, you see. So you do have a Patreon as well, brother, do you? <clears throat> yes, yes, I do. The Negro Egyptian Patreon. I'd rather for people to do the Negro, I'm going to take, I'd rather for people to do the Negro Egyptian Patreon or, uh, you know, it doesn't, I'm not in it for that. I just... Mm. I'm helping my brothers and sisters, but you know, um, I'm not, you know, you don't have to do anything. Um, I'm not asking for anything, but it's all good. All right, brother. Well, thank you very much for the next nap. And, um, but I'm going to put an end to this live stream. Um, I found well, it, I brother. I found oh, 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 yeah, go ahead, uh, go ahead, share. Uh, actually, I even forgot. Do, do you want to take some callers? Do some people want to ask you questions? Or... Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, now, uh, I'm going to share the link because maybe some of you have some questions for the brother Neb Neb. So, um, well, actually, I think I've shared the link already, but I, I, I'll put it again. So, I think to ask uh, Neb some questions oh man i don't think of that. now watch me find it now, soon as i get off here <laughs> yeah no no normally i require people to to show their face but i make an exception because this link is to ask the brother the next question so um um feel free feel free you can ask your questions in the chat i've shared it you see you can ask your questions uh, actually i'm going to pin that one because the I have the other one pinned before, so replace pin message. There it is. All right, and uh, you can ask in the chat, or you can just go directly on the on the panel. And uh, oh, here it is. So English, Hindi, Maori. See now, watch this, bro. Now, this is what I mean about similarities. Now, if you see these forms, we know that English and Hindi are in the same Indo-European language family. Let me check my worry real quick. I think that is in the European language family because, no, is it? Let me check. Let's see if it's, what language family my worry? Wow. Austronesian. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Yes, you're correct. You're correct. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's not me. It was Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah, but it's, but it's still, it's, yeah. yes, Wikipedia can be good for mm. quickness, like, like, mm. but just for basic. This is just the most mm. easiest basic stuff, right? Mm. So we know English and Hindi are related. They are in the same language 
family, you know, European. Maori is in Austria. Can you pronounce that again? Austro. Uh, well, I'm not sure about my pronunciation, but Austronesian. Uh, okay. I can I can, I can type it in the chat. Austronesian. Uh, Austronesian. So we have an Austronesian language with Hindi and English. Now, if we look through these terms, you find terms that some of these terms look alike. See that? Let's look at some terms that may have some type of look alike to it. All right. <laughs> you are. <laughs> you good. Now look at this. Dog. Kuta. You have Kuri. Right? We can say, okay, that's similar. Because English, you have Kuri. So T and R, we know, we know that can be a result of sound change of T going to R, but this is multilateral comparative analysis. This is only probing for sound correspondence. See? So if you have a word, kuta, which is in Hindi, kuri, they kind of are familiar, similar. See? They're similar. But does it mean they are related? These are totally different language families. Maori and Hindi. <coughs> Look at this word. Seed. B, poor, B and P are labial. See, the difference between B and P is only voicing. Only voicing, P and P, right? So it's B, poor, similar, similar. That's it. Uh, you have mass, flesh. Let's look at flesh. You have, does this make, this is a cognate, just because it look a lot. You have mas, and then you have meaty. We know that S and T, do, I think uh, the sound change is from an S. I know it, the S is hardening to a T. So this will be some type of fortition. So this is a mas. This look like it's nasalized. Mas, and this is meaty. They look similar, same meaning, but this is an English loan word in Maori. See that? Loans. So when you say something is cognate, you got to be careful of using that word because that looks alike in all languages. Now look at this. This is another English loan word, Tira, that's inside of Maori. You have par and piki. They look similar, same definition, but they're in fact not the same. This only means that these people have been in contact or in contact with each other and somehow certain words became culturally diffused. Here go some more words. You can go down this list, you'll find words that kind of look alike with each other. That doesn't mean they are the same. That doesn't mean you have to prove that aspect. That's what I mean. All right. All right. Here go another example to for my point. Just Can you make it a little bit larger, brother? Bite. Yeah. Well, look. Let's go to eat. Shop, and you got in my word, ka. See, ka. Cha. Bite. Keat. Kakati. These words are Hindi, and this word is, uh, well, in the European, and this word is Kakati. They look similar. But are they the same? See? Yeah, you know, Jeremiah D. wrote, right, like how the pseudo linguists tried to say Nyame and Yahweh are cognates. Now, right. um, I, I, I've, I've, I didn't, I'm not sure if I, if I heard that initially the claim came from the pseudo linguist, but Zion Lex has uh, claimed that he stated that Niyame is uh, Yahweh. And for those no, who don't know, Niyame no is, 
Yes, it's from the, the Twi language of Ghana. And Yami basically could be translated as uh, God, you know, uh, and uh, Yahweh, you know, we know Yahweh, uh, which might have been pronounced <laughs> Yahoo, by the way, <laughs> according to Dr. Weston Mohammed, who studied Biblical, biblical Hebrew. I like Zion Lex. He's a pseudo linguist. He's another <laughs> pseudo linguist. Yeah. Um, but it, he doesn't claim to be a linguist, though, does he? Well, it don't. See, I keep telling you, you know, me being in a linguistic field, you don't have to claim it to me. Mm. When mm. you make linguistic, apodictic statements to the general public, you are saying that you're a linguist. You're saying <laughs> okay. that you are qualified to make these statements. See, so um, Yahweh and all of that is not related. That came from a. We are looking at right now from a peer peer review data words from Maori and Hindi mm. that looks alike. Mm -hmm. They look alike, but they are from two totally different language languages. Mm -hmm. They are not cognates to each other. Mm -hmm. This could be a result of chance similarities. You ever look at it? Yo, yo, I've seen a dude that looked just like me on a beach one day. One day, my cousin, we go on a beach. And when we go on this beach, he say, yo, he looked just like you, man. I turned around and it looked it just like me, brother. Mm. I got scared. My heart pounded. <laughs> but is he, is he me? No. Just because someone looks like you. Does it make y'all the same entity? Mm. It, it doesn't work like that in science. If someone say, Neb, that is your clone. Someone cloned him from you. To be an asshole about it, I would say prove that he's a clone. You got a lot to prove when you say these things. I understand why people say it. I'm just saying, if I wanted to be an asshole, I would say prove that brother is my clone. Mm -hmm. To be an asshole about it. But that's a nice analogy, actually, you made, because uh, I was once told by someone that in the whole world, we have at least two lookalikes. But um, I agree, probably more. Many probably of more, us, yeah. yeah, many of us, uh, and and that's actually when we travel that we we tend to see that when I travel to different countries, eventually I will see someone and I'm like, damn, he, he looks so much like uh, that person that I know. But sometimes it's even in the same country where you are, you will see someone, you know, whether it's male or female, that that really looks like someone that you know, and mm -hmm. uh, they are not blood relatives. They don't right. share any uh, genetics, you know. And um, there's one thing that's quite um, particular with Africa. And uh, when I lived in England, that's when I realized that the most with um, brothers from Burundi. And many of them had the same features. So right. probably yeah, back right. in the day, people would live in communities and maybe they... I don't know if they get together as cousins like people do in uh, North Africa and <laughs> other regions, but they 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 really have the same phenotype. So I was like, you know, you, you guys are brothers? And no, no, no. They're just from the same uh, place. But ultimately, um, uh, sometimes like, you know, for example, from, from in the Congo, the Democratic Republic of Congo, um, a fair bit of them they have wide eyes, you know, and sometimes with the with the with the shape of the the eyebrows, the wide eyes, and 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 the cheekbones, you know, just by looking at a person, you know, you 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 can presume, you know, and eventually I will hear the person speaking, I will hear his accent, or I will hear the few Lingala words that I know, or I will ask, and indeed that person is from the Congo, you know. Sometimes when I see people from Haiti uh before they speak i was like oh that person looks haitian and then as soon as i hear the person speak you know even if he speaks french i can tell the accent because my parents are from haiti so sometimes it you know besides the lookalikes sometimes uh people from a particular place have a particular phenotype but with african americans we don't really see that because of all the mixing that took place but anyway that was just in passing really yeah, you're correct. Uh, just because we had the same phenotype as you explained doesn't mean you're from the same clan. Mm. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't even mean y'all related uh, to mm. each other because we had the same phenotype. We look mm. alike. That's the same. What I'm trying to say is it's kind of not the same, but I'm trying to use that as a An analogy yeah. to help with linguistics when it comes to these words. 
that people like Zion Lex assume in Hofik. But I like Zion Lex better than assume in Hofik. Uh both of them are pseudo linguists, but I like I like Zion Lex. It's just personally, I like his personality. He's respectful. He does uh, he 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 has the right characteristics to be a great historical linguist. And it's just these guys are just they want Hebrewisms. And they, you know, if we get these guys, man, we get Zion Lex. Can you imagine if Zion Lex went to school for science for, for historical linguistics, Egyptology, history being historic history, how great. That brother will, will be, he's very intelligent. His words come off so beautiful, like yours, man. Uh, y'all have the most beautiful articulation skills I have ever seen. <laughs> and if y'all get into these fields, man, it will be nothing stopping us because y'all will be doing it correctly. Uh, Zion Lex is another great potential that is we, that is, we are losing him to pseudo him, yes. <laughs> You know, so uh, no way Yahweh. Yahweh is not even in the Medi Uh Yahweh is only in the Medi when it is speaking about the uh, foreign deity. It says it. I did a peer review on it. It's in peer review. Yahweh isn't in Medi but our people said that that was a foreign deity. So right there, it historical attestation. In linguistics, there is a such thing as Proto languages. Proto languages are not real. I remember this community thought they were real. They were saying, "Yeah, you know, the people that spoke Proto Bantu." What? That's <laughs> not a language. <laughs> Nobody yeah, spoke that. Reconstruction. <laughs> so I'm like, "Well, Proto Bantu is not a language. You can't even compare it because it's not real." And you have what you call different types of proto languages, though. You have proto languages that are hypothetical, fully hypothetical, and then you have uh, proto. Then you have proto languages that are tested. So let me tell you what a tested, well, so called. I never well, so called attested. Uh, let's say Egyptian in its proto form is attested. We can see writings all the way in the Nile Valley. Oh, in Nubia. Proto writings. That is a tested, but we still don't know how it sounds. That that particular type of old language. So we have a tested records for some proto languages is far and few, but the general speak evidence we don't have for these uh languages. Some languages are attested, some languages are not attested. Like Proto Bantu is a non-attested. Proto language. So when we are speaking about these things, we have to know the right uh, nomenclatures and words uh, for 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 the general study, and it gets you in trouble every time. I get it. Now, brothers and sisters, you know, um, take advantage if you want to ask that never question, and even if you don't have a question, if you want to say what's up to him if you want to say thank you for your work if you want to say congratulations you know uh because you know it, it doesn't hurt it's not to flatter our ego but sometimes i tell people you know even if you don't have a question if you want to say what's up you know that's okay but um whether the chat or to get on the panel feel free and uh, i will just go through the comments that i have not read so in the meantime really take advantage if you want to ask a brother some question because you might not have that opportunity all the time you know so really take advantage uh, don't be afraid to ask a question. He's not going to blast you. He's just going to answer you, you see. Um, so. Uh, yeah, bro, there's a lot of similar words in Maori and Hindi. Hmm. Another thing is the Moors. All right. The Moors do another pseudo thing. Of every time they see a word with more in it, they, they, these guys, man, they. And I love the this. I got a lot of. I was once. In the more science, you know, yeah. right? I'm a, I love Noble Drew Ali, man. I love what he did at that time. He did the best he could, you know, he did the best he could. What, what can you do at that time, right? So he had to shamble and put together all the pseudo information he could put together. He even put a, a herb inside his Quran. He put a herb. He wanted culture so bad that he put a herb 
inside of his Quran. He put an herb in it and then said, Arabic, he was speaking about Arabic and angels being Arabic and all of this stuff, right? But I love him because he was talking about Egyptians. How he was trying to give us what he can, right? But the Moors do the same pseudo linguistics. <laughs> Every time you see more, I mean, like they go M, -M and R. That's yeah. it. It says more. Since they say M and R, it's it's just a more. They see an M and R medu nature. They say it's that's that, that that's what we are Moors. Tom Mary, they say that because it has yeah. Mary on it. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that I mean, they were Moors. Ali Mohammed uh, said that publicly on on stage. He he's, he yeah, he's put the 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 merge the ha, the whole H O E or the pla, and uh, he actually stated there was no no such thing as the civilization of Kemet. It was a civilization of Moors, <laughs> you know. And I played that 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 a few times before, you know. That's crazy, you know, it's funny, but you know, it's all good, man. I love my brothers, and it's just, you know, um, every time they see MR, I, man, I'll be trying to hide MRs from them guys, so they just won't, <laughs> you know, they see an M and an R, dude. Don't don't go nail. They're gonna they gonna say you're more, you know, that, that's more. That's what they're gonna say, you know. Yeah. And that's bad science. Like we're looking at Maori, and this they talk about the Moors, y'all. Maori language is not a Moorish language. <laughs> Please do not say me and Afro styling across the internet. We're comparing Moorish language. You say <laughs> Moorish, but that's not a Moorish language, people. Uh, All right, it is a lookalike. Remember, we talked, me and brother Afro styling talking about lookalikes, different types of lookalikes, and stuff like that. And that's what we were talking about, Dr. Faraji and Dr. Issa. Right. And uh, one time I had fun and I showed them, I entitled the video Sikh Moors. And I showed <laughs> them the, the word Mer that means Sikh, but obviously Mer would be the pronunciation according to the standards of Egyptology <laughs> right. of adding the vowel E between <laughs> the two consonants. But the transliteration would be the M and the R. But we also have Mer, which is, or Mer and M and R, as, as with our transliteration, that would be the pyramid. But then that's why we have determinative to make the, the difference, the difference, the distinction between the, 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 the words. But, you know, obviously our people, they, and, 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 you know, the funny thing also, and you've probably seen that uh, most of our people, they love to use budge, which is outdated. He did the best he <laughs> yeah. could. He, he, I wouldn't say he was. Uh, he, he just did the best he could at the time, you know. And since then, the the, the knowledge has advanced. You see, so. Budge, well, budge is an yeah. actual good dictionary. It's just that budge, his translation, his transliteration is outdated. I mean, mm. we don't go by that. The words that they see that spell, we mm. probably spell it totally different today. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because this transliteration was outdated. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> well, brothers and sisters, uh, maybe you are shy, but um, it's okay. Uh, we, we'll take some time to be comfortable with dialoguing with one another. But I understand, however, uh, when we look at the majority of Black people, or even if it's just a so-called conscious community, the dominant views are the Abrahamic views. So if we're there talking about, you know, Yahweh, Allah, and uh, Yeshua Christos, uh, there are probably more participation. And uh, But but it's okay, you know. Uh, uh, it's, it's okay. As long as you're listening and you're sharing the information. And, you know, what I will say in closing is that at some point in Dr. Campbell's critique, he wrote that, this type of uh, work is dangerous. I mean, he he said that, you know, African-centered, and I'm paraphrasing, African-centered people are already under the attack. Yeah. So we don't need to give them more grounds for them to attack us. Basically, he, 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 it's not a, he doesn't want us to look bad. Yeah. You see? You see? Shekhan, Dr. Shekhan Tadiop and Dr. Teofaro Benga, they look good. 
when they faced all those scholars in the Carroll Symposium in 1974. They were well prepared, you see, and that's what we have to do. We don't want to just come and appear pseudo and be brushed away, brushed off like that, you know. And some of us, what we like to do, as long as it's a, as it's a black person making the claim, we want to support that person out of uh, uh, color solidarity. But um, in the long run, that would not help us. So we can, we can uh, deal with, with, with different scientific field, you know, um, we can be competent, we can be uh, articulate in certain uh, areas, Correct. and that will be a benefit to our people worldwide. But if we allow the pseudos to teach our people, mm. well, you know, it's like the blind leading the blind, you know. Mm. So when we have qualified people, you know, why go and deal with the pseudos, you know? Mm. We are lucky, really, to have people like that who who took the time and the effort to earn those those degrees of titles or to study and be uh, proficient in those different areas. So those people, they 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 can uh, pass the test of time. They can engage other scholars. You know, they can really defend our ideas in a proper manner. You know. Right. But other people, they will say stuff that f make you feel good, that sound good, you know. Uh, I mean, I could, give, I could give some examples, but uh, it's very funny when even the white Egyptologists, the Euro European Egyptologists, the majority of them worldwide, they translate Cam as black. Correct. We have two brothers <laughs> who say, no, 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 it doesn't stand for black. And now those two brothers are right over all the Egyptologists in the world. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we have yeah, to get real. Man. We have to get real. So, uh, Brother Nezineb, I will, make you, I will let you make your, your closing remarks. Uh, thanks, Apple Styley, for allowing me to come on the show. Support Apple Styley. Support My Eye Forever. Uh, donate to My Eye Forever. Good guy. This is the French brother with the beautiful voice. Peace out. Peace. Thank you very much, brother Benetjene. So, brother and sister, stay safe, stay healthy. And if I'm allowed to, brother Necheru, I will definitely holler back at you. Hotel. Hotel. Now, for the record, for those who don't know, I'm giving medical nature classes. And here, that's the flyer. Okay, so those who are interested, feel free to holler at me. If you're not interested, it's cool. But I recommend everybody, I recommend that everybody who has not yet seen the video Kemet and Ma'at before Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, then watch it. It has about 300,000 views and really deserves to have a lot more. I just want to let everyone know who's gonna, who's, who's gonna, uh, who's listening now and who's going to listen to this, uh, this, uh, stream in the future. I just had a, my first Meta Netcha class by Brother Shaka today, and I've had other, uh, Meta Netcha lessons by other teachers, and I can tell you right now, the brother is the best in the game. He is, uh, that, that was one of the best classes I've ever had, ever. So if you're interested in learning the meta nature, if you're interested in getting the basics of it, Brother Shaka is an awesome teacher. Get with him, and it's extremely affordable. This brother is giving us his time and his skills, and he's basically giving it away. I mean, I, you know, I just consider it a donation, you know what I'm saying? So if anybody is interested in learning the meta nature, get with this brother right here. He's an awesome, awesome, awesome teacher. And I'll end with that. Hotep Senu, Hena Senut. This is Julie, also known as Servant of Yah. And I'm currently taking the Medu Netra classes with Brother Shaka. And it has been an amazing experience. Only two lessons so far, and I feel like um, I've been taking the classes for months. Just with the, uh, how in depth he goes into the vocabulary words, um, the construction of the language, the grammar. Um, it's been immeasurable. Um, the experience. 
And one thing that comes across hands down is his uh, extreme passion for teaching this to anyone who is willing to learn and has a, a, an interest in learning. So I highly suggest um, if you are interested, even a minimal interest, that uh, you subscribe to the classes with Brother Shaka. Um, it's such a nominal amount for how much you get. Uh, I know like our last class was uh, over two and a half hours. It felt like two minutes, but because that's how you know involved you are in what he's teaching and how he teaches and how compassionate he is about what he teaches. Um, also with sharing materials free of charge, uh, no question, no doubt. Um, it's just what he does. He doesn't have to, but he does. And so I just wanted to give a short testimonial um, about the class and the effectiveness of the class. And uh, all of that is attested to uh, how studied Brother Shaka is. Uh, so I highly recommend anyone with a minimal interest that you do sign up for the Medunetia class. Hotep. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, which is Ma'at Forever. Don't forget to watch the video entitled Kemet and Ma'at. Don't forget to share Kemet and Ma'at on my channel on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, or other social media that you use. Email, text messages, you name it. Those who wish and they can do so on paypal.me slash my forever